Welcome to episode 39 of the Tumbling Saber podcast, where we now sit 108 days until the release of Rogue One. Uh, we're also less than a month than, uh, from the release of Rebels Season 3 premiere. Uh, thank you guys for taking time out of your day to be here with us and to discuss the wars. And uh, here, once again, to help me on this Sunday night is none other than Mr. Ten More Seconds himself, the guy who recommends tea and pickles as a snack. God. At Chop Rules himself on Twitter, man. Corey, what's going on? What is going on, my brother? And I don't necessarily recommend that. I was just kind of saying that if you needed reinvigoration, you should eat one of my tumbling pickles. But aside from the fact, everything's going great, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Uh, and also joining us is James at Tommy Bombadil one on Twitter. How you doing, sir? Uh, doing terrific. That's two weeks in a row we open with pickles, just so you know. There's something. We're, we're going to keep There's the streak something. alive, man. We're going to carry the flame there for pickles. I still got a jar for you, Kyle. I delivered one to Mr. Bombadil yesterday. Yeah, I'll get my hands on it soon enough. Don't worry about that. Uh, guys, um, still not a whole lot of Star Wars news going around. So we're, we're in that black hole. We're in that, that ugly vortex that uh, we kind of thought was coming. But no problem. We're going we're gonna to gonna talk our way out of it. Just like Han, like Han Solo talks his way out of everything, we're going to talk our way out of this. And... Uh, a sad farewell today to another of, of our cherished childhood members. Mr. Fuji passed away. Oh, did he? At the age of 82. Yeah. What do, what do you guys remember of, of, of Mr. Fuji? Just his goatee, really. The hat. <laughs> his goatee. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I can't knock you too hard because I, I remember the guy. I remember the vibe that he used to give me whenever I'd see him. You're talking about the wrestling character, yeah. right? Are you talking about Karate Kid? Okay. Oh, that, 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 that was um. Sure. Oh jeez. Yeah. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. That's not Mr. Fuji. Yeah. No, I got confused. <laughs> I had to make sure. God. They, they're a big playoff. Hand in your another. child of the '80s card. Dude, do you think they came out at the same time for, as a coincidence, or a will of the force? It was definitely a play on one another. That was the, what the WWF was all about back then. Well, he, he well he was the opposite of, of Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, similar character. Though. He he'd be the 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 bizarre bizarro world Mr. Miyagi. James James, do you remember anything about Mr. Fuji? Uh I had to when you said it, I had to Google search, and uh, I'm you flashed back into some memories now. But it's funny, I I you think I'd remember him more. Like I I recognize the character, but I really can't tell you any matches I ever remember him wrestling in. Uh. And, and I was a pretty big fan. Like uh, I, I can tell you, I thought he was a manager. I know my junkyard dogs for my uh, for my Jake the Snakes. You know, and I'm, I'm surprised. Isn't uh, he a manager, Kyle? Yeah, he was. Well, he, yeah, he was sort of the uh, ring manager for. I know he was with Yokozuna for a while. Uh, but be, before that, I can't remember, and it's driving me nuts. I know the guys at Gen X Wing could help us. Oh, out they would. There. They would for sure. And, and yeah. Like I said, we we sound like a bunch of schlubs and uh, uh, about our wrestling right now, but I'm 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 really not. Um, Yokozuna, yeah, you're right. He definitely managed Yokozuna, but before that, he was around before Yokozuna, wasn't he? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Kyle and I watched the. He, he was he was he was the master at slipping his guy like the the foreign object. Yeah, his cane. Whether it was a chair or or the the. the bag of salt that or whatever it was that people would throw in the eye <laughs> he was legit man he, he was a, just a guy that you love to hate the, the guy played the character so well anyway this is the only star wars podcast that will eulogize mr fuji i think maybe not, well, well i think gen x is right there well hopefully they mention them because they'll do a better job than we just did but i yeah, thought I you know he, he was a notable part of our childhood i thought maybe we should uh, give him a little nod um, all right, let's let's jump into Star Wars news. That's that's enough WWF talk for now. WWE, um, you're showing your age, Kyle. It's always gonna be WWF to me, always. Um, jumping into Star Wars, not much news, like I said, but uh, it was an interesting piece that came out. Um, I picked it off, uh, picked it up off IO9, and they were asking the question: uh, Does director Gareth Edwards know why his Star Wars movie is called? Rogue One. Yeah, I think most people, most Star Wars fans, when they hear Rogue One, it, it all sounds immediately comfy, cozy as as Star Wars Star Wars uh, verbiage goes. Rogues, yeah, it makes sense. The whole thing just made sense. But you, 
How many people stop to think about what Rogue One means? Did you guys ever stop? Yeah, I thought uh, we, about it. We never stop. We, we never stop. We're, all, we're always moving the needle, Kyle. We're always on the go. <laughs> you took the way words to plug, out of my way to plug teams. away. There you go, lying to lying to the fans again. So okay, so Corey, what 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 did you think when you heard the the, the story of Rogue One? What did you think? Or let me predict what you thought. Well, we spoke about um, it on the show Rogue prior. One. Have we? Yeah, I have anyway. I guess you weren't listening to me, but. <laughs> uh, possible. That makes sense. So you, you you tied it right away to Rogue Squadron, right? Correct. I saw it as being the one being the genesis of said squadron. So when we see Rogue Squadron, it's kind of like a a throwback to this Rogue One group that kind of was like this insane uh, mishmash, pish posh of people that was kind of like the Star Wars Suicide Squad in a way. Yeah, and I think that's probably what most Star Wars fans assumed. Uh, so, so Gareth Edwards was speaking to Empire Magazine, and uh, he he offered some, I don't want to call it insights, because it doesn't actually give us any insight, but here's his quote. Uh, I'd been thinking about it. I'm reading this from io9, uh, which quotes from Empire Magazine, so this is kind of a mishmash of people's thoughts here. Uh, I'd been thinking about it, he reflects, in the new issue of Empire. What does it mean? Rogue One is a military call sign to some extent, he adds, referring to Red Squadron during the Battle of Yavin. But this is the first film that's gone off-pissed and is not part of the saga, or the Anakin story. So it's sort of, or so it's the Rogue One, you know? Uh, which I think, you know, I, I think that's interesting. I think that's really interesting uh, um, in that he said not part of the Anakin story, which just... I, I'm gonna I, it deflects me off of Rogue One for a second. It makes me think that Ray's story is the Anakin story then, by default in that comment. No, I think you said anthology, no? No, but if you said the first, uh, and I know you were paraphrasing, so this might not be his exact quote. But if he said this is the first Star Wars movie that's not about Anakin's story, then that means Ray's story is about Anakin's story, right? Well, it's a continuation of the Skywalker story, which includes Anakin. Yeah, for sure. I just mean it's sort of more confirmation that she's either a Skywalker or, you know, like likely a Skywalker. Ah, uh, that's well, that's an interesting way to look at it, for sure. I I wonder if that's sort of an unintended confirmation that he's now kicking himself over, and 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 you just un unearthed something there, James. Uh, I sidetracked this anyways, and I didn't mean to, so we can come back to that. But yeah. Uh, well, I, I like the idea that he he kind of labeled this movie as the first movie, sort of sort of to go rogue off of the Skywalker, away from the Skywalker story. So it's in in that sense, it's it's Rogue One, now uh, which which is a cool thing. Yeah, that's definitely a cool way um, of looking at it. Yeah, and, and then they talked about uh, could it mean Jyn Erso? Could she be like Rogue One? Uh, could that be her her military call sign? Uh, so th there's a bunch of, of multiple meanings that uh, Rogue One entitles, but uh, I'm going to throw my own in there. I have a theory of but what Rogue One means, because I, I don't think he's actually giving us the full story here. Yeah, that's that's the impression that I got, because the last thing he said is possibly that maybe I'm even the Rogue One in the sense that, like, I've never done a movie like this or something, something along those lines. So I, I think he, yeah, he's I mean, not telling us as much as he knows, really. Yeah, his 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 quote. While there's there's a lot there to talk about, I don't. I it it leaves us back at square one. Uh, but my theory is that uh, Galen Erso is Rogue One, and I only think that because did did you guys catch the international trailer for for the Rogue One movie? Yeah. So that's that's the one with the added bit of dialogue from uh, that rebel. Uh, he's a leader. He's a commander of some kind. And they they say the transmissions come in, or they've inter intercepted a transmission. And then uh, Cassian Andor says it's from your father. He says that to Jin. And so I wonder now if he becomes sort of the the objective for the rebels, to, not only to destroy the station but to recover Rogue One, who is Jin Erso's father, Galen. That's good. I like so that's that. That's my simple little theory. That's my theory. Galen Erso is Wait. Rogue One. 
I thought about it almost in the same light as you, Kyle, in the sense that uh, I was kind of looking at it like, because what he had said, maybe Jyn Erso was the rogue one, and this, but, yeah, as you just explained. So looking at her father that way is a very big possibility, but I was kind of looking at Sa- uh, <laughs> Saw, Saw Guerrera in that sense as well. Like, cause you, you get the impression at a point that um, Jin and uh, Cassian Andor are in search of him, kind of trying, we need you to, to, to kind of complete our, our our fellowship, if you will, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's another good observation, for sure. And I, well, and you pointed out how they're searching for somebody, and it, it brought me to the Force Awakens where everybody was searching for somebody named Luke. And so I find it interesting that perhaps this movie is is again about the search for somebody. Not that these two movies have anything to do with each other, uh, but it seems interesting, at least superficially, that uh, both movies could be about the search for some figure who's who maybe disappeared. Yeah, I agree. James, you got anything you want to throw in the hat? Th- throw in the ring there? Uh, I I didn't watch the uh, the trailer you spoke of because I'm I knew it contained something more and I sort of purposely avoided it. Uh, I think what you said makes a lot of sense, Kyle. Although, um, as you pointed out earlier, I was lying to the fans when I said I I considered what the title meant. I really hadn't until <laughs> until the show notes. Um, Way to come clean. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm sort of listening to you guys and, and digesting it and, and deciding whether or not that makes sense to me. I don't have strong opinions, but both of you sort of have sold me um, with your initial theories for sure. But I don't think that Disney... I don't think there's any one right one as well. I think it's going to be it. a, as usual. I, like a... I don't think Disney had the intention to um, give it so many meanings necessarily. They probably had an idea in their head, and now, you know, it's being interpreted different ways by different people. Um, but the fact that they made the, the title interpretable like that is is a good sign. Um, you know, it's it's uh, there's so much information missing from from everybody's guesses that every theory sort of could sound plausible, right? Yeah, and. Uh... I don't. I don't know how much Disney had has to do with the naming of the movie, uh, but I I I think it works out really well that it, it could be taken in so many directions. And I, I what I take from the piece on Io9, which of course came from Empire originally, is that whatever they tell us is not the truth at this point. Exactly. If, if they're not confirming it, then it, I I I'm just going with it's something else. So I had, I had to stretch a little bit and say, well, what could it be? And who's the guy that we have yet to see anything of from from the trailers or for anything really? It's it's Galen Urso. Yeah, it fits, in the same it fits way that we formula. never saw any, anything of Luke. Yeah, it fits the formula, right? And regardless, like before we move on, like this is kind of just like really like Star Wars fans, like kind of like looking for something, you know? Like, cause either way, like the relevance the relevance of it is not anything really special either way there's gonna have it's not really of any great significance like we know where this story's going it's just we just kind of want to know at this point well yeah yeah <laughs> who is rogue one essentially it's just the title and you're right I, I don't know how important it will be in the grand scheme of things but what i do know will be important in the grand scheme of things is the uh recently leaked photos of uh, of the first wave of, of three and three quarter action figures that came out, and that that those images came out today uh, on makingstarwars.net. And man, every time I think I'm out of collecting or at least one foot out the door, they do their damnedest to pull me right back in. These some of these figures look smoking hot, from the packaging right down to the figure itself. Man, oh man, uh, did you? I, I, this was a late add to the show notes today, but did you guys happen to check it out? Yeah, I checked it out. Looks like it's got a nice Sabine coming out. Uh, yeah. So yeah, no, I I didn't check it out, but can I can I go on air with the pun with the uh, the anagram I I told you guys before? Or should I keep that for uh, for when we eventually do a, a, a an after hours podcast? 
I, I know it's eating you up inside. I know that you want to do anagrams as much as you can. I'd love to get them out there. Anagrams are truth. Um, so action figures, those little things that are about the size of your finger, uh, they actually anagram to a finger coitus. I just thought that <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Oh man, I, I I don't think I I don't have to tag the show explicit for that. I don't one. think so. I think we're good. No, they, they uh, use that on the. Uh, to mind some pretty awful images, but. <laughs> I hear it on the Big Bang Theory all hey. the time. Do you, I, I I I couldn't tolerate that show. Yep, maybe not finger coitus, but. I just, just found out today that that uh, Sheldon auditioned for Barney Stinson's character. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Interesting. Yeah, that that would be a very different show role. A very different spin on the sh on that role. Man, oh man. Barney Stinson was a scene stealer. Show stealer, absolutely. Yeah, show stealer. Yeah, absolutely for sure. He, I'm sure he, he was the guy to watch on that show. I'm sure for the most part, all of us had written him off. Oh, for sure. After Doctor um, Doogie. He, but yeah, his role in um. Dead Man on Campus, from what I understand, is what Barney Stinson, the writers, ins like were inspired to create the character based on that portrayal. That guy, he, he played himself. I don't know if you remember the movie, but he played himself in uh, Dead Man on Campus. No? I actually don't even know that show I at all. It was, it was a movie. Terrible, terrible. Uh, it might have been uh, Lampoon, but I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a crappy 90s comedy. And and Doogie Howser played himself. Um, what's his name? Neil Patrick Harris played himself, but a hilarious, like, coked out party animal version of himself. Are you sure you're and, not uh, thinking of Harold and Kumar? Oh, I am thinking of Harold and Kumar. Of course, of course, you're right. Or, yeah, because so, as you're just, man. as you're, yeah, you're describing the role, and I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds like the same role he did in, in Harold yeah, and no, Kumar. And yeah, that my mistake. That was the first time I had seen him since Doogie Howser. And I was like, this this is NPH? Oh, my God. And it was hilarious. He was great. Yeah, he stole them. Oh, so opposite of, of anything I had come to expect from NPH. Uh, anyway, how did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, anyway, so these figures, like I said, they, they, really, they look spectacular. And there's, there's a... A uh, Jin Urso figure uh, who looks to be in some kind of... She almost looks, looks like she's wearing a garbage bag. Uh, and then, Corey, you're going to like this one. Uh, the Canyon Stormtrooper. Yeah, that was a nice one. That is a cool-looking figure. It looks Definitely good. Have it to looks get my hands detailed, on that one. yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm going to have to get two of those ones because um, uh, my son Carter, he has a ton of Lego Stormtroopers and he's he, he's got his hands on a few of my actual Star Wars Stormtrooper figures. And if the helmet doesn't come off, he loses his mind. <laughs> so he freaks out on any figure that where the helmet doesn't come off. And so I, 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 I'm afraid for their safety. So I'm going to have to get him one of these and he can just take the helmet on and off as he pleases. Uh, and the, the K2SO figure... Looks looks terrific. As does uh, that was the one I was really looking at. A... Yeah, he looks like he's gonna be awesome. I, I'm I'm liking that character more and more as I as I see him. Uh, just your standard issue stormtrooper looks looks cool. And then there's the imperial ground crew figure. I almost thought that and was that, a knight of that... ren when I first looked at the image before reading who it was. I was like, ooh, a knight of ren toy. Uh, I guess I could see that with those glowing sticks. Exactly, that's what I saw first. I was like, "Oh yeah." Uh, but that—that's the suit or the the um the costume that uh, G uh, Jin Erso is wearing at the end of that uh, the first Rogue One teaser. Ooh, uh, it looks a lot like it anyway. You, you can see those glowing sticks sort of in in her backpack. Yeah, that's true, eh? So, and they make note of it on making Star Wars that. Perhaps this is confirmation of, of that, that uh, outfit she's wearing, which makes sense. Uh, and then, like you said, Corey, the Sabine figure that finally, let's, let's hope they actually produce them in, in adequate quantities this time around. Yeah, I still don't you still want to get your hands on a first-gen one, though? They're out there, just not many of them. 
Uh, I'm not even going to bother looking. Uh, then Kylo Ren. Haven't seen that figure before. And that's it for Wave 1, I believe, if if they're right here at makingstarwars.net. Uh, some super looking figures. I love the uh, the artwork for the packaging. So I'll, I'll, I'll buy a few of those and torment my kids with toys that they can't open. <laughs> they hate that. They really do. Just keep it a secret. They, they look at me like I'm... I'm not going to keep it a secret. I'm just going to dangle it just out of their reach. If there's one episode of The Big Bang Theory that I can recommend to you, Kyle, it's an episode where Leonard Nimoy has a, a voice cameo in the episode. And it's a good one. It's all about buying collectibles and playing with them or not. It's really, really, really good episode. Yeah, there's a, there's a deep divide on that topic. Like Some people are just like, just just open them, play with them, handle the figures, love them, you know? And there's other fools like actually I, I kind of walk both sides of the fence. Some guys I leave in the packaging if I really like the the uh, the packaging artwork, I'll 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 leave it. But if I want to check out the figure or or uh, line him up with his teammates or whatnot, I uh, I will open it. Uh, but some people are are adamant one way or the other. It's it's hilarious to see the uh, divide on the opinions. You're you're still leaving the package type guy, aren't you? 50-50, like, well, I mean, all my, I have nothing really collectible like that anymore. I used to, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's all gone now. But I still have a lot of old toys out of the package that I'll never get rid of. Like, I have an old Rancor. I got an old T-16 Skyhopper. Well, it wasn't that from the 95 re-releases? The, the 95, that was, but the Rancor was from, I think I bought that in about 85, and I still remember getting it at the store. It was on, obviously it was on super liquidation. This was like two, three years after the movie had been released. Right. But I was so happy to get that and I still have it. It's missing. For the longest time that we had, a, we had a toy actually shoved down its throat. Yeah. Yeah. He's missing a part of his still, jaw. Is it still in there? Mm, I shake it around. I hear nothing. No, we must have fished it out at some point. I'm sure it's, there's, I'm sure there's stuff down there. I'm sure of it. If we open them up. But well, we're not going to do that. Mm -mm. Uh, okay, so the next topic, we're moving on from the toys. Those come out uh, in about a month from now. There's going to be another Force Friday event. Uh, I, my, my enthusiasm for that Force Fr for the next Force Friday event is, is significantly dampened uh, due to the experience of, of last year's, which totally sucked around here. And I expect it to, to suck again. So um, I'm not going to have any fear of missing out on anything if I'm not there at 8 o'clock on, on day one. Although I, I may stop on my way to work and, and just poke my head in and see. Uh, but I, I think the thing I am looking most forward to is the uh, the 6-inch Black Series figures, for sure. They're going to look spectacular. Yeah, they look so hot. Actually, one more thing before we move on. Did you see that that pack? Of two figures from earlier in the week with the... Uh... Poe Dameron? No, no, no. It was... Um... Oh, jeez. Did you see the one with Poe Dameron quickly, though? With the... Like, he was in some kind of robes and stuff. Like, like waist robe, kind of. It was weird. It was a double uh, no, packaging. I... And I think it was... I think it was packaged with a character from Rogue One, if I'm not mistaken. Which is odd. Uh, you're going to have to Google that and send me, send me the, what you're talking about, because... I can't imagine what, what it is you're, you're talking about. We're getting it. I think I saw it on Facebook. Must be true. <laughs> oh, it must be. So what the, the thing I was talking about was uh, a two-pack featuring a character called Moroff, who looks like a, almost like a wampa with some gear strapped to his face, and a Scarif Stormtrooper squad leader who looks amazing. And uh, I look at these figures, these two packs of, of one character with, with these troopers who we all know are going to be huge hits. Just uh, of the the retroness of them, the variety of stormtroopers that we're getting. They're going to be uh, great collector's items. But they come packaged with a character that will probably be forgettable at best. So nice job to Disney and Lucasfilm packaging up these characters. Uh, in in a twenty dollars set, which I assume that will be the price point, and um, making you spend double 
for really one figure that you want and another that you could care less about. That's good marketing. That's how you squeeze your uh, your fans for every single dollar. That's true. You pay a little more for the character you don't want, but I guess you kind of still get him, which is kind of cool. But yeah, you're only going for the one. Oh, here here's the here's the uh the Poe Dameron pack you're talking about. It's it was with a uh, snow trooper officer. Yeah. Okay, so that that is from a snow trooper. Well, it's in Rogue One packaging. Uh, but you notice that the the Rogue One title is not in the the packaging itself. It's weird. I'm looking at it too. It's a it's weird. It's it's like a an afterthought. The lack of title. The, the whole the whole look of the packaging. It's kind of a uh, weird. It, it's I, I think, very. F- I gotta say this quickly, Kyle. I I think there is a bit of a packaging issue with the toys right now because I think of I've, I've seen. Toys package under the Force Awakens banner. And oh, what do you mean? Like, I'm trying to think in specific, but I know I've seen packaging where I'm like, okay, well, these characters aren't even in the Force Awakens, kind of, you know? And they're just like re well, yeah, new yeah. toys. Are you talking about the Constable Zubio, Zubio uh, Peg Warmer? No, definitely not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Poe's I'm, armor I'm pretty looks sh- really odd from behind. He's got this like jetpack armor in the new pack in the new uh, figure. Oh well, the, yeah. I mean, I don't know why they do this. They they for all these figures, they create some sort of silly accessory that goes with them, as if anybody really really cares about it, as if they're they're giving you some sort of value add. Like nobody cares about those bonus packs and toys that in the Force Awakens. Like if you. If you manage to get lucky and, and find three different figures, you could snap together the extra accessory and, and build one big piece. It was it was dumb. Well, this one is pretty dumb for two reasons. One, it looks dumb, but two, it's like blue and gray. And so when he's wearing it, it, it he's completely unrecognizable as Poe Dameron. Like, I don't know, not a fan. Yeah, I, I've, I'm never a fan of those extra accessories. Never have been. And I think it says I something. I don't know yeah. why they do it. In the article as well, it says something that, you know, they dressed him up in a certain way, and who knows if we'll ever even see him on screen dressed like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't see him like that in, in The Force Awakens, so maybe that's a sneak peek at it, something he might wear in, in Episode Eight. Maybe. I, I can envision that, I suppose. Especially if some of the uh, spoilers or rumors that are, that are circulating about Episode Eight are true, then that is an outfit you can de- you can definitely imagine him wearing in episode 8 yeah, you lost um <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i i i very intentionally avoided getting specific about spoilers about episode 8 at this point um yeah like i said they're going to pull me back in a bit with um these toys and I, I, if you scroll to the bottom of that piece on making star wars uh they've got the u-wing and they've got that uh tie striker and i'm gonna have a hard time not picking either of those things up yeah, the, U, go back the u-wing that looks sweet whoever has these shows on file which is us and probably my mom um can go back to like episode eight or nine when you were like i don't really collect anymore and I said, well, wait till the new batch of toys comes out from the next movie and you'll be collecting all over again. You said, well, I don't think so, but we'll see. Yeah, I, le- I left the door open. <laughs> I, I was smart enough not to close the door. You did, I'll, I'll but give I, you that I, credit. You, did, you didn't say no flat out. You for sure weren't buying. Oh, I definitely I, remember I, that. Well, I'll have to see. I will definitely have to see. I mean, there's going to be some sticker, sticker shock involved. And uh, I, I can't afford everything. So I will really need to be choosy. And I, I have to apologize, too, because I, I actually remember really, not any bash, but I was like, I'm not a really big fan of the U-Wing. I, I don't like it, kind of. It's kind of weird that we're being introduced to this new ship like this. I remember that. Or was it? Anyway, I had kind of said something bad about it, but after seeing this trailer, like, in the way it kind of, like, transforms in a way, if you will, like, it was, I'm like, oh, this thing is cool. 
And I think it's about time we get some new ships. That was one of the criticisms of of the Force Awakens. That what Tie Fighters, Star Destroyers, and X Wings again? Come on, like let's 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 get some new stuff in here. And at least we're getting a, a variation of this, of a Tie Fighter this time, and an entirely new ship called the U Wing. I wish somebody would, James. I think uh, somehow you have to you have to mash Patrick Ewing and uh, this Ewing ship together. Um, I don't know how you um, do it's that. It's already but... half done in my head. Yeah. How does how does a <laughs> ship the, get sweaty? Wait for the T-shirt. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Um. All right. I think that's that's it for toys for now. Maybe for for another month or so. Uh, the next story that came across is uh, something that Corey put into my field of view and also put in the show notes. So, Corey, you're going to take it from here. And if there's any uh, blowback or any knocks on the credibility of, of this report, it's at Chop Rules on Twitter. <laughs> uh, you, you, you can bust him up there, and I'm just going to roll with it here. So, Corey, possible Episode 8 trailer news. Why don't you uh, fill us in, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Well, to be honest, I'm really not that prepared for this question because I didn't know if you think you'd do it or whatever but <laughs> to be honest I don't know who put it out there but it was someone that we both follow on Twitter um, they they posted a pic of someone who had taken a snapshot of what looked to be Disney's scheduling for trailers coming out and there was one that mentioned an episode 8 trailer and I believe it was December 21st 2016 uh, and there was a multitude of shows on this there was Doctor Strange it was all a the whole Disney lineup. So once we got to kind of talking about it and we're all saying, you know, I don't think this is true. Maybe it is, who knows? And we were kind of banging on the drum that maybe they will coincide the trailer with the release of Rogue One. Um, but then we looked at it a little deeper and we saw that the, uh, there was a trailer spot for Doctor Strange in October, but by that point it would have already been released. So James made a very excellent observation in the sense that maybe it was a TV scheduling spot. Maybe the trailer does release with Rogue One and then hits TVs not days after, or if not the same day as the release. And again, that could take away from Rogue One or, again, play off one another. You know, why not play off one another? If they're they're ready to put a little snippet out there, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, I, the safe bet, whenever you see something floating around on Twitter or Reddit or Facebook, the, the safe bet is just to say this is BS, right? It just, you don't know where it's coming from. Just say, no, 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 no. Just put your defenses up and, and dismiss it. So in, in this case, it's, yeah, I remember in the tweet. And, and even that person who, re, who tweeted it said something along the lines of, uh, don't hold me accountable for this, but, you know. It may or not may not be. Was, was it was it Josiah? Josiah, was that you? I don't know. I'm, I I don't want to throw Josiah under the bus. So, um, I I remember that screenshot, and it was it's interesting because it was a very close crop. So literally anybody could have just typed something up in Excel and then screen grabbed it. Um, uh, but to, you know, to me to to release. If it's a, if it's a cinematic release, it makes zero sense because to. Released the Rogue, uh, the episode eight trailer on a Tuesday, following the, the first weekend of Rogue One's uh, cinema run, makes uh, zero sense. I, I think you would undercut Rogue One's momentum to a certain degree. Of course, yeah, you, that was the first thing you said, and it made perfect sense. And uh, again, like five days before Christmas, like uh, none of none of it makes sense. And uh, again, I, I. I don't know what's going on on TV. Maybe ABC has has got something planned for Tuesday night, uh, December twentieth, and so, hey, we're gonna we're gonna staple an episode eight trailer to this, and everybody's gonna come flocking to it. So we know we know we, if it's a Tuesday night, we know it's got nothing really nothing to do with football, and. Uh, could it be something related to basketball? I don't know. Um, yeah. It, it, again, this whole thing with, with Rogue One, it, it, it's sort of a science experiment for Disney and Lucasfilm. Like we've, it, It's uncharted waters. This is unprecedented in, in, in Star Wars. We, we don't know how they're going to handle this from a marketing perspective. But I, I got to say it. 
A, a trailer release on a Tuesday? Uh, doesn't make much sense to me. James, like you said it was a TV thing, possibly. No, that was my guess. Uh, when what's, saw, what's your take on all yeah, this? Yeah, when I saw the schedule, I thought this this doesn't look like a schedule of release to coincide. Because it would have said, I think, honestly, it would have had more than dates. It would have, and who knows, like, like, let's point out again, we have no idea what the source was. But I think it would have been attached to movie titles more so than than dates. So to me, that just looked like a different schedule of movie releases that wasn't necessarily the first time these were going to be shown anywhere, just maybe the first time on broadcast television. That, that's my guess at what that list looked like to me. I'm trying to think it's, what would, what would be finishing then? You said basketball. I'm, I'm, there's a, a series of, a season of Survivor that should finish right around then. That could be the, uh, the season finale of, uh, of one of their like winter winter shows, you know? Well, is Survivor is what? Is that Fox? Is that CBS? CBS. I, 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 I have to imagine that if there was an episode eight trailer coming out, <clears throat> excuse me, on TV, it would air on, on ESPN or ABC or, or, or Disney property. For sure, I would say for sure ABC. No, you're right. You're just right. It to would draw have to be ABC. eyeballs to the main network. It would have to be ABC. You're Although, absolutely right. Uh, think back a couple weeks to the to the Olympics, and they aired the uh, the Rogue One trailer on NBC. Yeah, that's true. So so who knows? Who knows? Uh, there uh, there's no right or wrong answer. Just yeah, I've got my eyebrow raised to this a little bit because the the date just makes no sense to me. But stranger things have happened. I just thought I'd put it out there as well. I mean, I don't necessarily think it's true either. I just thought it was interesting, really. Oh, it is interesting. But you both made definitely you both broke it down right away perfectly. Like I had thought the same thing as James, and you brought an excellent point up as well, Kyle. So, well, that's what we try to do on this show. Pat each other on the backs. Good job, boys. <laughs> Tripod. Yeah, don't. No enlightening or entertaining, just patting each other on the back. <laughs> moving on to our next excellent segment. Yeah, moving right along here. Um, Hey, who said there's nothing to talk about here? We look at this. We're 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 chugging right along here, and we got a, we got a long way to go still. Uh, so Daisy Ridley threw threw cold water on everybody and said, "Don't expect an episode eight title for a while." Boo! And so everybody's crying and oh my god, what does that mean? You know what it sounded like? It means my to first, me, Kyle, for, when I first first saw that, I was like, "Oh, someone told her the title and said, don't tell anyone." <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounded like uh, well my first reaction was uh, my favorite C word clickbait <laughs> which I guess in a way this is a little bit um, but this, I, I picked this up off slash film and I, I don't put slash film in the, the clickbait category so uh, I'll, I'll cut them some slack there uh, so uh, this, this is from slash film.com I'll, I'll, I'll read this right off the page uh, Daisy Ridley appeared on a popular podcast called My Dad Wrote a Porno uh, from Across the Pond, and they briefly touched upon Episode 8, specifically if we might find out a title sometime soon. Here's what the actress had to say on the matter. Quote, I heard a title, but I don't know if it's going to be that. I really don't know much about anything. I heard the title a long time ago before we started filming, and so I feel some things have slightly tweaked during production. It's going to be a while before it's released, I imagined. End quote. Um, again, just like we talked about a few a few minutes ago with uh, uh, the Rogue One meaning, we're, we're, this is a spin your wheels quote. So yeah, she may have heard something a few months ago before before shooting, and it could very well have changed. Now whether or not she knows, uh, the point of this article says we're gonna have to wait a while. And 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 the question here is not does she know? The question is. What does a while mean? And that's that all comes down to a matter of interpretation. So, uh, for, for some people, a while is going to be like if you if you ask your daughter James or Corey, if you ask Nolan, what does a while mean to them? They'll tell you the end of the afternoon is is oh god, it's so long from now. Talk to an adult. A while from now could it be a week. It could be a month. It could be six months. It could be any of those Christmas things. Christmas time, solstice. So I don't know. To me, this is all in the eye of the beholder. This this 
episode eight title drop could come not at any time. It's not. I don't think it's coming anytime soon. But I, I don't think it's as far off as uh, the quotes and the uh, the spin the article gives would lead you to believe. No, I, I think you're right. I think we're gonna find out in less than a while. But I really do. I really do feel like someone like very recently told her like, "This is what we settled on. Don't tell anyone." And she was like, "Wow, you guys aren't gonna find out. I don't know. It keeps changing. Um, we'll see." No. Yeah, I, I imagine she's got to know. No, I don't. I think I think she really said it straight in the sense that she got the working title, and Star Wars is all about that. Like Lucas did that, and I'm I guarantee you, like the fan reception and the, pe- the way people received Force Awakens changed the original script for this Episode Eight. Like they play off the fans to. And how people reacted to things in order to write stuff. And that was the same way in the old trilogy. And like I said, I think she got the working title right at the beginning. And she basically did give a little tidbit saying that stuff was tweaked in between. So maybe they did change it. Maybe it was... Uh, well, she, she, she said stuff may have been tweaked. It was the Fury of the Force. And now it's a lost hope. <laughs> <laughs> How is that right? <laughs> I, I have a feeling that... And this is based on nothing. Uh, that that the episode eight title, as much as we you know we gave our our best stab at it and came up with some pretty standard fare, uh, I think this will be the most cryptic title that none of us are going to see coming. Going what the what the hell does this mean? That's my sense, and I think it's going to come uh, along the same timetable as as the Force Awakens, which came I think in Novemberish of uh of 2015 close to a year before yeah close to a year before and i think it's gonna be the same timetable so that that makes it about uh, two and a half three months from now which uh, that, that that's classified as a while from now quote or just hold um, off that much longer and coincide it with rogue one or yeah maybe they maybe we only find out the title once it's once we once we see the trailer drop it could be as simple as that. And I think Daisy Ridley did say something interesting on this podcast, and I just want to give them props for their name again. And Wow. But just in the sense that, uh, like, ah, uh, all right, scratch this shit. I lost my train of, train, total train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally, I, I am totally leaving that in the Such show. Such a dick. Just, just swear all over it, Corey. You'll have to edit it out. I should. Too late That's now. Not, not, I, too late I now. I, I, no, I, yeah. it's too late. It's, it's buried. It's, it's too far behind you. My show notes are two point form this week. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, I lost it. You know, I don't catalog things like this on any sort of spreadsheet or anything. But if I wanted to put together a, like a, a a show one day of like bloopers and greatest hits. Uh, all that, I, it would take ages to find all that stuff. I, I, sometimes I wish I, I would note these things down. And yeah, next time I listened, oh, to, I listened to an old podcast the other day, and we were actually talking about some interesting stuff that could would have been relevant today, but I didn't have a pen. Yeah, now I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> There's only thirty something podcasts to choose from. That's amazing. Yeah. It's cool every now and again to listen to the old ones. I was like, oh yeah. I have never gone back to listen to an old one. Never. Man, you just see how wrong you are. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll paraphrase Matthew Good here. These podcasts are sort of a uh, a permanent record of your own stupidity. I like that. And uh, permanent as long as we choose to keep this thing online. Uh okay, let's let's move on. Uh, anything else about the episode eight title, guys? No, I don't think so. I I think my point, what what I was trying to get to, is that I think she had said something along the lines. Ten, of, ten more seconds, Corey. Ten more. Ten more seconds. Yeah, she didn't want to overshadow. She didn't think Disney would want to overshadow Rogue One, which is what we had just discussed, and that was she had mentioned something about that. Um, uh, no, that's, that's another fair point. Again, like the. Uh, 
this whole thing being a bit of a science experiment, they they really need Rogue One to have its space and its its time in the spotlight for it to go well. They need like Star they Wars. They need Rogue One to have its space. Yeah, like they, they, <laughs> like Star Wars will sell itself to to you, me, James, and everybody listening to this. Rogue One is not a problem for any of us. Uh, to the average moviegoer, they really need to. Um, make sure that this movie stands alone in their mind for a while without muddying the waters with episode eight. Cause somebody might go, I don't really want to see this star Wars movie. I'll just, I'll wait till next year's. So the, they need to really define this movie and not let it get uh, uh, washed up in anything else. I feel like they've yet to do that yet. Cause I have a lot of questions from people that know I like star Wars and they're like totally lost. No, you're right. I don't think they have done such a great job on that. And I, I'm a little bit afraid because, I, if I'm not mistaken, at Celebration, um, was it Kathleen Kennedy who almost said verbatim that they were going to let fans do the clarification for them, which I think is a terrible idea. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I, think, I, think you're over, yeah. I think you're overestimating um, the, the, the viewing audience. Yeah, like I, I've had to explain it to a, few, a couple of coworkers already that Rogue One is not at all related to the to the current sequel trilogy. If, if you all. want to sell movie tickets to your to your Star Wars fans, yes, it's true that you can let the fans sell the movies. But if you want to sell movie tickets to the however many it takes to make the billions of dollars they made with The Force Awakens, that's not just Star Wars fans. So they they got to do a little a little marketing outside of letting the fans sell it. I, I would think. Yeah, and that's that's got to start soon. And I, I think with back to school just around the corner, or, or in, in some places already started, I think that is coming. That's inevitable. Summer's winding down, and um, the, the marketing machine is going to start cranking. We're going to start seeing Burger, uh, but Burger yeah, King absolutely. cups with uh, stormtroopers on it and stuff. I would love that. I you know, I have all the Subway cups that they released for for the Force Awakens, but they were cheap, man. Like I, it, it was fun to collect, and I, I loved doing uh, stops at restaurants to, to grab this week's release. But those 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 cups were cheap, man. Like, I have this, a set of uh, Burger King cups from Empire Strikes Back, I believe. They're gorgeous cups. They're amazing. And the ones from, from A New Hope, uh, from Burger King in, in the late 70s, they are the nicest cups or glasses I have ever seen. I'd love to get my hands on those. Uh, if anybody's listening for my Christmas present, that would be a good start. Nice. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, <laughs> all jokes aside, no, they're great glasses, and I, I hope we get something other than just cheap, flimsy plastic cups next time around. Did you know Subway anyway, is the uh, biggest restaurant chain in the world? Yeah, isn't that stupid? It's crazy. Really stupid. And not good either. I don't love Subway. I eat there a couple of times a year, but I don't. Certainly, we have much better here in the city for fast food subs. Dagwoods is much better. You think you think Dag, Dagwoods would subs would uh, sponsor us? Well, I just tried to plug them, Corey. Uh, Kyle, you could be a little less uh, obvious about it. <laughs> if you don't ask, you don't get. No, you're right. Straight up, we love Dag, Dagwoods. We would plug you every every night. We go to break room and eat your subs. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I get I get Dagwood platters all the time at work. Eggwood is great for that. I when I did my uh, I used to host an annual poker party for a bunch of years, and I'd always just do Dagwood platters. That was the best. Yeah, for for a while I would, like uh, this will probably kill our sponsorship opportunity, but I would not go there because I refused to eat a cold sandwich. Like I, I figured that if I can make it at home, I'm not paying you know uh, restaurant prices for it. Forget it. I'll go buy my my own cold cuts and I'll throw them in my own my own button. Yeah, but the two counterpoints there are you can't make the Dagwood sauce at home, and uh, they don't charge restaurant prices. And it's they have to a get toaster a, now, too, as well. To get a they have there. a toaster oven. Yeah, and they make good soup and chili, too. The chili is good. I like a good chili. Agreed. All right, back on. right, let's get back on track here. Um, this, uh, the next topic, I think we'll, this, we'll have some fun with this one in, in this black hole of Star Wars news. Um, Although we're doing pretty well, carving out a show here, but I, let, let's let's have some fun with this. 
and there's there's no really no rules to this, so we're gonna have to figure this out on the fly. So if if Star Wars characters got sidetracked and came to Earth, what would be their favorite food if once they got here? So I'm gonna I'll, I'll give you guys a character and think about it for a second, and then come back with with what do you think they they, they would dig into here on Earth? So uh, I'll give you I'll give you a softball to start. What would Han Solo love to eat on planet Earth? Corey. Um, I kind of took the question in a different approach, but I, I think the first food I'm going to introduce to any humanoid is going to be a platter of tacos. You got the seafood, the chicken, and the beef, possibly pork. So which one is Han Solo going to dig? All of them. I love it. <laughs> they, he's got, they, there's plenty of space of birds out there. They got plenty of seafood in the universe. Lots of cow type creatures. <laughs> uh, James, what do you what do you think? Han, Han Solo looks to me like like the most American 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 that you could have. So, and I don't mean that in any other sense than he's just about as as pizza and hamburgers as I can sort of picture. I just see Han Solo pulling up and ordering like the double burger with large root beer and jumbo fries and that just i don't know and Han Solo's that yeah and, and it drips all over the falcon and he doesn't mind because that's just how he rolls <laughs> i i was i would that's where i was going and then i said it, it dawned on me no that's not where he'd go han solo i think would be buffalo wings fair that's 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 a good one i think he'd be a wing guy well, you know what's funny about the, this whole project or thought is the first thing I said, because I kind of, like I said, I took it in a different approach in the sense that I was like, what would I show them? And it's like, you guys all nailed it all. I said tacos, pizza, like poutine, smoked meat, burgers, hot dogs. Like I get all that stuff out of the way and be like, okay, then you can kind of get in some delicacies that Earth has to offer. But... We're, we're, yeah, we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna show our heroes the worst of us. Here's some hot dog. Eat this crappy discarded meat this is what i give to you my hero but anyway that was the last on the list but smoke meat oh my god pizza pooty a pooty a puts in that bound neck <laughs> you're probably still fine kyle uh probably still fine uh, i don't know what pooty means but um... <laughs> it's puts in <laughs> is it uh okay so all right cory name a character Let, let's let's kick somebody else around all right this is going to be difficult for you because what does try 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 and keep it human because i don't know what 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 a rodian would would prefer i was going to go uh mon calamari but uh all right what would ahsoka like on earth don't go vegetable Uh, salad ahsoka no 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 uh, Ahsoka is a sushi girl. I was gonna say I sushi. Like it. Boom! You guys both Ahsoka, nailed it. Ahsoka is sushi. Yeah. Moving on. You guys nailed it. Yeah, uh, no question to me that the variety, the colors, uh, it, it can be somewhat healthy, although they're they're just they're carb bombs. So I don't know. But yeah, no, it, it makes sense. I think uh, Ahsoka would certainly be a, a sushi girl. Yeah, that, that didn't take you more long. sashimi than, than 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 the rice. Did you know no, I was gonna say that? That, that just no, I, no. Why would I? How would I know that? I'm just two steps ahead of the game, man. All right, James. Uh, that, I mean, that was easy, right? Like uh, Ahsoka would go for sushi. I don't know. We came to the same answer pretty quickly, so it's either lazy or easy. But either way, my turn. Um. All right, uh, you're not allowed to say fish and chips, Obi Wan. A nice bowl of, of noodles, like Oriental noodles, like a like three like a.m. noodle bowl, like yeah, like get some ramen with some nice, you know, some nice broth, some, some lemongrass. That's a that's solid. I don't know. Would, would, would that get in his beard? Would he be Would he be annoyed with no, that? Flavor saver. The big beard. And I, I, the chopsticks I like. I, I, I could see Obi-Wan like being pretty adept with chopsticks. 
that yeah uh, that that's a really yeah um i'm gonna go with something indian like he's gonna go with like uh, beef korma or something like that something nice and spicy butter chicken curry curry something yeah with a with a with an with an india pale ale to go with it both excellent choices because he's well look uh irish pubs right or Eng english pubs Heavy, le he lean heavily on uh, Indian food. Oh, no doubt. We always got so a, I, think a creep that, I, I think that's where he'd go. <laughs> uh, that's, that's an abomination. No, I love chicken no. curry poutine. One of the best. It's pretty good. Yeah, but just, Duke and Divines. Don't, don't call it poutine. There's another yeah, sponsorship opportunity, Kyle. It tastes good. It tastes Don't call it poutine. Amazing. Just, just don't call it a poutine. Curry fries yep. gravy. You have something against Putin? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I realize I can, that that's grounds to get myself like assassinated in this part of the world. But um, if it's if if they don't use curd cheese, and I I know there's a couple of pubs around here that use shredded mozzarella in their uh, their curry Putin. That is that's that's no, that's a big. Who no. can divines uses curd you, cheese? You, though? Cheese curds? I haven't been in a while. Yeah, they do. But I, just on a quick side note, I got to tell you guys this. I would never say anything about anything like this. I would never complain. I've worked in restaurants. But I went to a local uh, Greasy Spoon near my place, right? And I order there quite often because they have very good French fries. All Wait, do, do we need to – is Greasy Spoon a local thing? Or does it, do, we, do people need to know what a Greasy Spoon is? Greasy Spoon just most of North America. It's like a diner kind of for burgers and dogs and stuff. So anyway, I'm on my way home. I want to expedite the process, so I call in my order as I'm driving. I get there, and my fries are covered in mozzarella. So I tell the girl, I'm like, look, I, I would never do this in the past, but now I'm at an age where I don't care anymore. Like, as you get older, like, now I can see where I'm going to be when I'm, like, 70, or how old people don't care. I, I, I said, yeah, the, the I'm like, I was like, I was like, whoa, 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 dude, ease up. You're 35, not 75. That, that's a, to say I'm old and I don't care. No, like get off my lawn. That, that's an old man thing. No, I'm getting there. Like I would never, I like people butt in line sometimes. It took me the longest <laughs> time to be like, hey, bud, you're, you're butting in line, you know. But like they put mozzarella on my fries, so it's henceforth no longer puts in. And I told them this. I said, look, I ordered a puts in. They're like. Oh well, all the all the they said all the delivery or takeout puts in. We we put this. I'm like, well, that's not what I ordered. I don't. I didn't order fries, gravy, and cheese. I ordered a puts in. And they're like, uh, so what? You don't want it? And I'm like, yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> like, make me another one. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Hey man, good good for you. Good for you, man. Yeah, forget that, man. I ordered a. Puts I think in. you did the right thing, Corey. Pizza. Yeah. I'm too old for this stuff. No, you you got you you gotta you gotta maintain the standards, right? Well, the, the, what kind of reasoning is that? Is that all delivery and takeout we give you the lesser product? Because they they probably know it's well it's cheaper, and you're less likely to complain if you came all this way to pick it up and you don't want to wait any longer to get it replaced, or once the delivery guy brings it to you. It, you're gonna eat it or wait another hour. Or they say it just melted or something, you know? Like you could tell right away it's all melted. A curd a curd has its structural integrity for a long time. Alright, so that's we've 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 kicked around three. You guys wanna do another round or you wanna move on here? Is it is this fun? Are you guys having I fun? I love this. this. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so uh we've all we've all listed a character, I believe. James, who who is your character? I've I've already forgotten. My memory is shot. My Obi Wan. Obi Wan, right? Yeah, we so we all we all did you give your choice, Corey? Yeah, the brothy soupy thing. James, did you give your choice for Obi Wan? Well, I would have given him fish yeah. and chips, so I can't break my own rule. So I'll go bangers and mash. I knew it. <laughs> Solid. So, was but that also a pint of Indian pale ale. Definitely, I agree with the pint of Indian pale ale. Followed by a cup of tea. Definitely a cup of tea. 
I mean, we all did that. Uh, we had we had dinner together last week. Uh, yeah, last week, and we had a we, well, a couple of us had some coffee, and a couple of us had tea. So it's the way to go. It's just it's just what you do. Uh, okay, so let's let's keep going here. Uh, this is gonna be a tricky one because I think people will will go different ways, and I hope the listeners out there, I hope you guys weigh in too. Uh, go in with with the ones that we like or the ones we've talked about, and 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 feel free to throw your own at us if you if you want us to uh, tackle those. Um, let's. What would Princess Leia eat? No, General Leia. So we all, sometimes we have to define which version of the character. So General She'll Leia. She'll always be Princess to me, huh? Uh, uh, kind of true, kind of true, but the the. Elder version of Leia, as we've come to know her. Elder statesman Leia, more refined palate. Now that's that, now now we're getting to the debate. See, this is a this, all this. There's a there's a there's a method to my madness. This is, isn't just random. This is getting to know the characters through food. So, is Leia? Is it the refined Alderanian princess palate, or is it? Or is she now just sort of the? practical pragmatic general who just wants sustenance this is where the conversation gets interesting so go ahead james what 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 is leia's favorite well i see your point about how young princess leia on alderaan would have been a, able to you know spoil herself and her palate with probably anything she wanted while as you know older statesman leia general organa probably is a little more um, practical in her everyday approach to things. But I, I'll still maintain my refined palate just based on age, um, just based on, like Corey was saying, knowing what you like, knowing when to put your foot down, knowing that your ch- taste changes as you get older. I'll still say that um, as a young woman, even though she could have had anything she wanted uh, on Alderaan, she probably ate a lot of the same thing. Whereas now that she's in a different position, she's probably got some some real real favorites. And uh, if she came to Earth and got to experience our delicacies, I could see her being a uh, a tapas kind of kind of girl. I like that. That's interesting. You can't go wrong with tapas. No, either. it's something for everyone. But it's also sort of the uh, you know the foodie. Uh, experience that I think you know she's got the culture, she's got the the upbringing. She, she would know how to handle handle herself in that environment. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And there's there. Well, hopefully, Corey's at, there at this point now. He's only had my Bloodline book for going on a month, <laughs> uh, and I, I guarantee he hasn't read much of it yet. Guaranteed. No, I haven't. Um, oh, Jesus. I'm still. I'm still literally. I'm probably the past two weeks. I haven't read it once, man. Uh, to be honest. Oh, come on. To be fair, boss, he it's was over here time. recording a he was over here recording a commercial <laughs> all week. There's been a lot of stuff going oh, on. Okay. A lot of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um anyway, there's there's a there's a scene with her having dinner there and um the refined palate thing does does still stand, James. But this is this, this is pre General Leia. Okay, okay. But a, a leopard doesn't change its spots, so uh, I think I think you're on the right track. So Corey, what do you think? Um, obviously, I didn't have much time to think about this question, but thankfully James went first, and I <laughs> kind of went in. A, I kind of went in a sentimental tone in the sense that I think this is something I'd like to get see more flushed out as well. Her relationship with her, not her biological father, obviously Bail Organa, and I could see her being daddy's girl in the sense that she loves something very simple like peanut butter and jam, even though she's like very refined. <laughs> You know, she's a sweetheart at heart, you know, like she, she, she's a princess. Okay, she can have a, a caviar sandwich if she wanted, but no, she chose because that's what Jimmy Smith's like. The, the caviar sandwich. Oh, this is the hits keep coming. This is awesome. Or he's de- just fixated on sandwiches, P- peanut butter and jam sandwich, or I mean, at the w- other end of the spectrum, a caviar sandwich. Mac and cheese. Or like, <laughs> like I'm saying, like something like really simple, like mac and cheese, something that she shared with her father that me- has something sentimental with her. No, like a memory like a from mac, when she was a like child. Like a mac and cheese sandwich or like a... Something different a, that her only her and Jimmy Smith knew about or her and uh, Bale. 
See, I, I was on the same path, but yeah, maybe she would she would want something that reminded her of her, of, her, of a home cooked meal. And so I, I thought of something simple yet hearty, uh, but classic. Some all the things that kind of define Leia, and I I just went with like a roast bird of some kind, like a, whether it's a, a roast chicken or a roast pheasant, uh, with with some roasted potatoes to go with it, and and some kind of vegetable, and of course, you know, Leia drinks. Let's 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 not kid ourselves. Leia drinks, and so she'd have she she would probably love some of our wine. Maybe she'd love uh, the uh, the. I think George Lucas has his his. Uh, own vineyard. She'd probably like no, that. No, she's a princess. She'd have good taste. She'd like good wine. She'd like uh, I, I, like a, a big Italian um, Amarone or something. She'd like something like like a, a, a what they would call a man's wine in, in any other circles except for if she was around. Uh, agreed. Yeah, she would like something bold. She'd be a scotch drinker, actually. That, yes. You know what she'd like? It's, it's something that puts hair on your chest and she would take it down like a champ, yeah. right? Like a tumbling pickle? <laughs> like the tumbling pickle. <laughs> um, all right. Do, do, we, do we want to keep going? Have we, have we had our fill of this yet? Or maybe we can make this a recurring I was going to say, segment. we should come back to this. Let's 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 hang this up, and, unless Corey has a, a really good one uh, that will only take 10 no. seconds. But um, ten, 10 more seconds? <laughs> but if not, then uh, I think we can come back to this one. Okay, so let's put that to the listeners then. Throw us, aside from the questions that you give us that we love, ask us about some characters that uh, the, and their favorite dishes and, and give us your take. And um, I, think, I think this could be a fun segment. Like I said, it's kind of a way to get to know the characters a little bit through, through their palates and uh, the type of food that they enjoy. Interesting thing, I think. All right, let's, let's take a quick break and uh, we'll be back after we hear from Talk Star Wars. Hey guys. Yeah? yeah? We need to record a promo for the podcast. You got any suggestions? Well, we need to keep it as simple as possible. That sounds good. Something like, if you like Star Wars and you listen to podcasts, you should check out the Talk Star Wars podcast on iTunes. Uh, or we could really motivate people to listen. What do you have in mind? Well, you could tell people they should listen to the Talk Star Wars or they will feel the power of a fully armed and operational battle well, station. Well, no, no. You can't do that. Why? We can't threaten people. Oh. Now, Steve's right. Simple is probably best. Like this. I'm Mark. I'm Stephen. And I'm Rob. If you love Star Wars... And you listen to podcasts... Then you should check out our show, Talk Star Wars. You can subscribe to Talk Star Wars on iTunes. And find us on Stitcher Radio. And find full episodes of the podcast on our YouTube channel. You can find the podcast and everything else we do at talkstarwars.co.uk. And you can play with us on Twitter by following at Talk Star Wars. You should also head to facebook.com slash talkstarwars and like our Facebook page. Or we will strike you down with all of our hatred and your journey towards that dark side will be complete. That's not cool. I've said it now. Head to talkstarwars.co.uk and join us as we talk Star Wars. Or else. And we're back. It is time for some random thoughts, and uh, we're going to kick it off with uh, with Corey's Twitter poll of the week, and he's going to lead us through this. So, Corey, I, I think you ran another poll this week, and uh, what were the results of that? Well, uh, we were three up from last week, so we had a big 14 votes, guys. I was pretty disappointed. That, hey. hey, it is what it is. But uh, hooray for progress, growth, my yeah, friend. Yeah. Growth. Yeah, it's true. You know, somebody, sometime at some point in the future, we're going to talk about how we're getting dozens, if not hundreds of responses to our polls. And we'll think back on the early days of the podcast where we could barely manage a dozen. So think of this day then. Yeah, Girl, it is baby. what it is. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so basically I, I know this question has been out there several times, but I just put it out there. What If there's going to be a spinoff movie based on a character – in the next anthology film. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are, you, are you watching TV in the background? Oh, you're right. Sorry, man. We went, we went on a break. <laughs> I, put it, I put the uh, the volume back on. You put it on the TV for a three-minute break? It's like a background noise. I need that, man. 
Wow, you're a wow. That's that's pretty slavish devotion to TV. Yeah. Sports, man, sports. All right, continue. Go continue with your. All right, point. so basically, uh, again, what kind of anthology character would you like to see in the next anthology? Like, we know there's Han Solo. If there's going to be another character, what would you like to to be? Are there Vader, uh, Vader, Yoda, Dooku, or Obi Wan? Uh, the results were actually kind of surprising. Not so much. I obviously expected Obi Wan to get the resounding yes, which. He uh, rung in at a big 79% of the vote. Yoda came in at All right. 14%, which is kind of surprising. Dooku came in at 7 so he got at least one vote. And Vader was a big zero, which is, I think we talked about this not two, three podcasts ago. And you guys were both saying that you were yearning for more Vader stories and you'd be okay with that. But uh, um, nonetheless, surprised. I should have taken Obi Wan off the list, to be honest. Probably... Yeah, you probably should have, because I I did vote for Obi Wan. That's the one I most want. Me too. Like I I do not want a Yoda story. I don't want it. I might want it before I die, <laughs> but uh, not anytime soon. Let's say that. But it's out there, Kyle, and it's coming. So. I'm not so sure about that. I don't know that a, a Yoda spinoff is in the works. Not yet. And who knows? Maybe they'll keep the, I mean, keep the mystery. Is he really a character that can carry a whole movie? <laughs> he lived 900 years, and he's more than important. No, I know, but as as a central character of a movie, I don't know that he can carry a, a, a two-hour movie on his own. And of, of course, there's, there's supporting characters. We don't uh, know what his past is. His past is a complete mystery. You're thinking of met of Jedi yeah, Master yeah, Yoda. What about like sixty year old Yoda, like exactly. young, naive Yoda, adolescent Yoda? Yeah, no, no doubt. There's, I'm sure there's a fascinating arc to this character's life. I, I just don't know that we need to see it. Like we talked about it, uh, what was it three, four weeks ago, maybe? About what needs to be explained, what should be explained, what needs to be kept a secret. You know, one of the big fascinations of, of in Star Wars is is Boba Fett's past, and one of the criticisms criticisms of the prequels is that we didn't need to know about Boba Fett in his past. He was he was always a, a more intriguing character, shrouded in mystery. Yeah, when he was, but some of that's gone now. Dude, I'm just sitting more interesting for sure. I'm I'm sitting here shaking my now, head like same thing. We said the same thing with many many chlorians and kyber crystals. Like, how much do we actually need to know? But I, I honestly think the Yoda story is coming. There's, like I said, there's 900 years to play with there, and he's a central character. So, and I'd like to see it go, before I die. I'm gonna go, with Kyle, and say I don't want to see it either. I don't. Yoda's like like the Force and lightsabers. He's like one of the sort of mysterious characters that I don't need explained. He's cool, just just how he is. Just being a 900 year old, yeah, he... you know. Jedi Master who's living in a swamp like I, that's just so cool I don't don't tell me more like that's it I'm good like he was all, he was always the he became the embodiment of the Force for right. us right he was there was no higher Force being than Yoda correct and that's kind of been broken down a little bit when you look at uh, uh, the Clone Wars cartoons and what looks to be coming in Rebels that you know that, that that's going to be uh, stepped on a little bit but for a lot of fans of a certain generation. Yoda was is still the top dog when it comes to to the Force, and I we don't need it demystified. The midi chlorians things was was a big punch in the face to to so many who were like, no, "What did you do? You sterilized magic. Way to go!" Yeah. And I I think if you if you break down Yoda in, <laughs> in, in the same way, it's a similar thing where it's like, you, "Why did you do this?" You. It, it, it didn't have to be done. There were so many other things you could have done. I, I'd like to see his introduction uh, to the to the Jedi Academy, to be honest. Like, I'd like to see that young Yoda. Because like, you know, like, there's definitely going to be, like, so many people are going to know that this guy's an important character. Like, his, his peers are going to look down on him and say, like, this guy is important, more than important than us, you know. I just think there's a cool story there to be had. Yeah. And it will be told, in my opinion. Oh, look, listen, I, 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 I'm I, not saying that if they did do it, it would be a terrible story. It would probably be fantastic. 
but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. I agree with you guys too. I know what you mean about keeping the mysticism. What you just described to me, Corey, sounded like green Harry Potter. <laughs> I, I, well, all, all these stories, they all kind of draw from the same inspirational wells, right? True. So uh, a Yoda story, I think in the end, when, when you break it down to its major beats, a Yoda, sto- a, a Yoda movie would feel like something we've already seen. So in, and if, if, if that makes any sense, then I doubly don't want to see a yoda movie no they'd have to definitely do it right that's for sure definitely no love story and all that but anyway what well, that's aside from the point well, you, you you don't want to see like uh yoda taking his his girl to the to the drive-in <laughs> with little yodas on little yaddles on roller skates i'd like to see him serving him little I'd like slider burgers at the at the drive-in i'd like to see yoda at his full height when He's not 900 years old. I'd like to see if he's actually maybe like two, three, four feet taller. <laughs> four <laughs> feet? He's actually a person. Well, no, no, maybe. Well, not four. I'd, I'd like to see him like being like four feet tall, five feet tall, maybe. He looks to be about max three. Well, he's like, no, Yoda's like barely two feet tall. That's small. If I could reach my keyboard, I'd Google it right now. I can't reach my phone though, so while we talk, I'll, I will Google Yoda's height. I'm sure he's not even two I'm feet. I'm taking tall. the over on two feet. You got the over? Yoda's height. And the crowd goes wild. He's two foot two. I got the over. Two foot two, sixty-six point six six meters. Did you Google? Are you Googling that, or is that no, what that's what you're he saying? is? Yeah, I Googled it. There we go. Yeah, two foot two. So that's what twenty uh, twenty six inches. That's very small. That's a, that's a, that, that's a small dude, man. Most of our children are born bigger than that, I think. <laughs> or maybe no. not. What do I know? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're what? They're small, man. In the, the twenty centimeter range. I don't know. Don't I haven't had enough kids to really know this off the back. <laughs> You've had two kids in the last five years. That's that. Well, again, that's that's just that's two. You know, if I was a nurse in a ward, I would have these numbers right off the. Or you know, a mother. No, baby. Yeah, or uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Moms have good memories for this stuff. It's crazy. Like they know. Oh, you were born at seven oh seven on this day, and it was that this happened on that day, and you were this. You were X pounds and X ounces and blah, blah. And they could just tell you everything. And I'm like, that's crazy. Can you remember off the weights of all <laughs> you know, kids, but not the, not the length? But, but, you don't, you, but you can't remember that it's Star Wars and not Star Trek. Moms. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Back to, our, back to the spinoff talk. Um, I, I, I am resolutely no on Yoda. And Obi-Wan was my choice. We've talked about that ad nauseum in the past, and I'm sure we will again in the future. Uh, as for a Vader spinoff, like, I, I'd love to see Vader, but I feel like there, like what else is there left to tell about Vader? Yeah, I, I was on the same accord. Now, I, I don't mind seeing him pop up here and there, but I, I, I don't know that I would want to see a whole movie about him. Yeah, I, I agree. Anyway, yeah, to, to see him in, in Rogue One or, or, you know, to have him make appearances in, in places that make sense is fine. But, uh, no, I agree. Uh, definitely an Obi-Wan movie is top of, top of my list. I'd love to see a Qui-Gon movie too, though. Is that, yeah, that would be you know cool. What, I, I, co- I've incorporate been incorporate Dooku as well because Dooku is his master. That's a good point. I'm in. Yeah, so he's. Uh, a while back, one of the first blog posts I think I, I ever did on uh, TumblingSaber.com was uh, five comic book series that Marvel should explore. And I I, I really, really want to see a, a Dooku Qui-Gon series set in their earlier years. Like Qui-Gon would be 20, 25 years old. Dooku would be 40 or whatever. 
I, I think that'd be a fascinating story because they're they're both free thinkers, two guys who march to the beat of their own drum, and probably more than any two other guys uh, sensed what was going on uh, within the cosmic force, and they knew something was afoot. Uh, but because uh, because of their attitudes, it got them in trouble, and nobody listened to them. So I, th I think there's some good stories in there sure. uh, that, that would give us a lot of insight into the galaxy. We created force ghosting. Well, uh, Qui-Gon did. He figured it out. But he learned it from his master, no? Who learned it from the Sis? Probably not. Yes, I I don't think I'm so. pretty sure that's the case. That Dooku is the one who kind of taught him Sith. about it prior to leaving the, the Order. Sith's, we know the Sith can't force ghost. And I know that that Dooku wasn't always a Sith, uh, but I would I, I would imagine that just because he went Sith, does that knowledge of going f uh, Force Ghost go leave him somehow? I thought it, I uh, thought it was that I think he never had mention it. of. I thought there was a mention of his master having taught him that ability. Oh, if you can look up that explanation and, and determine if it's canon or not, because I, I my understanding is that Sith have no idea about the whole Force Ghost. I don't thing. think Dooku was necessarily Sith at that point. It was prior to him turning to... That's Because that's a great storyline. We have known nothing about who went with him. And it, in Legends, there's a story supposedly where he takes off with, with about 20 Jedi in hand to go kind of start their own thing. And he does seem more well, of a revolutionary the, the, than the lost. It's quite, it's the lost twenty, and I I think that is actual canon, if I'm not mistaken. So that's just big. There's big stuff to be had there, you know. Sure. I would I would love to know more. I I I love the Dooku character. Um. I I would I would totally love to see some stuff from him. Okay, let's move on to your next one, Corey. I think you. That was, that was a cool poll. Uh, it's one of those polls that is, has been done a thousand times on Twitter already, but it's 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 a topic that doesn't really get old. Um, next up, your topic that you and I had both sort of been wanting to get to, although we didn't know it. Uh, so you plugged this this into the show notes, and I'm wondering too. And I, I have an idea, and I think we all have an idea, but let's see where it goes. Uh, what kind of person will Luke be in comparison to the Luke we know from the original trilogy? So the episode eight, Luke. What? Let, let's let James run with this first. Uh, episode eight, Luke is going to have what sort of disposition, demeanor, James? Um. Okay. So, I I thought about this in a couple of different ways, and before I uh, get too much into my answer, I'm going to quickly throw out um, my favorite stupid fan theory ever, which I thought of myself. Uh, which is Luke is so messed up from what happened with uh, the young Jedi and the massacre in Kylo Ren that uh, he's got a schizophrenic personality um, where he's uh, both a Jedi and a Sith now, and he is Snoke. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's Wizard of the Wizard of Oz style Snoke, so like he's, he's man behind the screen, like it's Luke, but he's got like this big persona, and uh, he's running both sides of things, and, and he doesn't even know it. Um, and he doesn't even no. know it. That's a total, total, Fight club total style. Fight Club style. Yeah. And that you just blew my mind. Honestly, you just did. Like you, we've talked so many times about this, about Snoke and mirrors, and how him being the Wizard of Oz. But I never looked at it at, in that light. And that's. Well, I, I was feeling a lot of disappointment in you, James, until you said, "And he doesn't know it." <laughs> that. That's potentially a, 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 a cool foil to that theory. Oh, you'd need that. It would be too cheesy cliche without that. Uh, yeah, because I, I don't think... I, we've talked about this, whether on the show or not, but we've talked about how... I, I, I personally believe that Luke is, is sort of uncorruptible now. Having, having crossed that threshold in, in uh, Return of the Jedi, resisting the Emperor's temptations... Uh, to turn to the dark side to save his friends, to save his sister. Uh, I, I think once he became a knight, that was it for Luke. There's, he, he's not ever going to turn to evil. And so I, I, I do. For me to believe that he could be Snoke would take an, an immense 
immense leap like he doesn't know he's doing it. <laughs> well, do remember I prefaced this by saying I'm sticking it straight into the stupid fan theory uh, file. <laughs> so uh, I'll uh, duly noted. I'll take all of that with a lot of many grains of salt. Um, but uh, what kind of person do I think I'd be? I, I That Joe comes from sort of my, you know, where my answer is going to go. I think he's going to be a very different uh, person than the, the kid who sort of gives Han attitude. Um, you know, we, we don't have to take this. I'll fly, I'll fly us out of here. Uh, sort of the young, hopeful uh, kid that we that we met in A New Hope. I think it'd be very, very different. Sort of maybe, maybe broken down, uh, you know, depressed, uh, saddened, uh, jaded. I, I expect to see. I don't expect to see an upbeat, uh, positive, happy-go-lucky kind of guy uh, when we finally get to to see what what Luke's all about now. No, like you're you're right. So when we first meet Luke in in A New Hope, he's he's naive and he's idealistic, and then he's over the course of the trilogy, he transitions from that to wiser. But I think by the time we see him in Jedi, he's he's no longer that puppy dog who's who's bouncing off the walls. He's 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 muted a little bit. Uh, he's definitely wiser, and the idealism I think is gone and in its place is is a set of realistic views and values. Uh, so extrapolating further, 30 years further, which is, which is a hell of a jump. I, I, I got to imagine that he gets wiser for sure as he learns uh, more about the, the ways of the force. And then of course it's all cut out from under him. So add in a layer of heartbreak and disappointment, bitterness, disillusionment, all that stuff. Uh, and I, I think we're going to see, for the most part, uh, again, a, a wise, a seasoned, uh, but uh, but sad, a very sad Luke. Corey, Corey this, is, this is your question. So what do you well, think? You guys, you guys are really properly leading me into my, my thing here, but you guys nailed everything on the head. Like, Basically, you would... Well, and we have to say that it's it's not really much of a stretch, right? There's there's from what we know, he's gone through. There'd be no reason for him to to be looking to get tickets to go to Six Flags, right? No, but look, there, there's a, there's a point here, kind of. Um, Kyle, you had mentioned you like I I, I kind of have my title here as my this is my working question: Who is Luke Skywalker now? From farm boy to dashing hero to Jedi to master to hermit to question mark we don't know anymore like his life was obviously forever changed once he left Tatooine right but he was never the same Luke once he left Hoth in search of Yoda on Dagobah like you can tell on Hoth he was still kind of happy-go-lucky after getting smacked up by the Wampa him and him and Han are still joking around and that's the last Han season for a good I think it's a good seven months while he's trapped in carbonite and when he comes back, he's a Jedi. Like, a lot happens to Luke. Yeah, and yeah, a good year passes. So you said he's more idealistic kind of guy. And, like, I I was thinking the same thing, jaded, whatever, uh, after having failing with this Kylo Ren mishap and having the whole order destroyed. Where is a guy like that at at this point in his life? What happened? What went wrong? Where do I need to find the answer? And the answer is, in the movie, I need to find the first Jedi Temple. And find out where this all began. But why does he think that? Like, what is inspiring him to think that way? Like, what does he know that we don't that made him go in search of it and, in fact, actually find it? So, what answers is he looking for? In this I, ha- I have a he- I have a huge theory on that. Yeah, it's like he's it's the Gandalf theory to me. It's got to be the Bendu balance. There's a different way of looking at the Force that we don't yet know about, and it's from the early beginnings of the Force. Obviously, if he's looking for the first temple, so he was lost, and so I think when we find find him, he's gonna be still somewhat lost, although somewhat a lot more enlightened. I don't think he'll be he'll still be jaded. Obviously, you can ever erase those kind of things from your memory, which is gonna play on his in the movie's theme, I'm sure. But I think Ray is the key to him being able to unlock whatever knowledge or power or whatever it is he's seeking on this island of Act 2. 
Well, that's that's one thing I've mentioned on a, a podcast not too long ago is that did Luke find what he was looking for? Or maybe this is a question I asked to to talk to to talk Star Wars is that uh, in, in Rebels we see that it takes a master and apprentice to open up these temples, and I wonder if Luke looking for the first Jedi temple finds it but can't open it and like you just said Ray is the key I wonder if Ray is literally a key for Luke because he needs he needs an apprentice to help him open up or gain access to something it makes so much sense I, I'm pretty sure I am and this will all play into Ad's question as well because I watched several episodes of Rebels today uh... don't spoil it don't spoil that we have a question from Ad's oh, do we I forgot <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I my I did my homework on, on Ad's on, question man. too but it's different kind of homework from you guys <laughs> that's what we love about that guy uh, uh, multifaceted we like we like our listeners multifaceted here um i want to say something uh, sorry uh, before, uh, before I, I want to interrupt you because i'll forget um you said incorruptible you think luke is incorruptible now and uh can't be sent to the dark side um i'll say that now that i'm a parent um i think that there's like a test he hasn't passed yet i think seeing your your kids killed is a whole different level than even your sister um or your parents um, maybe. So I think that there's like, a, you know, a test he hasn't passed yet and we'll see what happens if uh, we find out this guy has kids and bad things happen to his kids. I don't know that he's, I don't know that I believe he's incorruptible still. But I think it's all safe to say that I don't think we're going to see the uh, happy-go-lucky Luke. I think we're going to see a hardened uh, wise Luke. Uh, well, if we if we think of, of Star Wars in terms of mirrors and rhyming as, as George Lucas liked to do, uh, I see Luke being, all, in many ways, like Kenobi in A New Hope, where he's he's also jaded. Kenobi was was a cynical, jaded guy, uh, but there was also a, a a glint of humor still about him. Now, I I I don't know if Luke is going to have quite that glint of humor. I think see no reason why he would, but you know, a leopard doesn't always change his spots, so. There, there could be some some kind of uh, <laughs> personable guy left in there instead of instead of just uh, an old curmudgeon. Oh, uh, but we'll have to see. It's, it's 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 probably aside from who are, who are Ray's parents. Uh, what's become of Luke is 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 probably the next biggest thing on everyone's like, mind, and it, it's the question that got J.J. Abrams into into doing this. I, th I think Kathleen Kennedy said said put it to him that. Who is Luke Skywalker? And that was the moment where he said, ah, "I gotta do this." That was that was the the thread that pulled him in. What I don't want to see is that I don't want to see Ray being the one coaxing him in, like, "Come on, you gotta come back." Like as if like the same kind of thing we think we're gonna see with Saw, where Jin's like, "Please come back to the fray. We need you," and he's like, "No, leave me alone. I'm happy here." Like I want to see him be like, "I've been waiting for you." Uh, I, yeah, I think that's that's more like it. Like the, I, again, with that that line from the screenplay that when when Luke sees Ray, the look on his face says it all. And I, I don't know if that came across on screen, but that's in the screenplay. And so there, there's it implies that somehow Luke has a sense of what's what's been going on and what's going to go on. Yeah, when when I see that scene, I've watched that movie. I'm into the double digits now, and every time I watch that end scene. Mark Hamill does a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of acting there. Every time I watch it, he knows. He knows something. When he sees her, he's like, like he knows, and it's just so awesome. Cliffhanger. On a little cliff. <laughs> it's funny how that never really got talked about, right? I heard we it talked about it. Literally a cliffhanger at the edge of a cliff. Yeah, we I, talked I, about I, it. Not an original idea yet. It's, it's not mine, anyways. I heard about it somewhere. I heard Mark Hamill say it at the Star Wars celebration. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's exactly right. That, that is where I heard. Yeah, but I mean, pr prior to that, like, I, I don't know how many people are saying it's a cliffhanger and they're on a cliff. No, you're right. You're so right. I feel like that's a personal miss on my part. Me too. That's a, that's a, that, was, that was a huge whiff on fandom's part. For sure, somebody picked it up. There's just too many fans not to have. 
but it wasn't part of the the the, the, the main narrative going through fandom. Um. Anyway, that, that, no, it's a good question. Uh, we should probably talk about what kind of uh, food young Luke would like and what food old Luke would like. But maybe we'll do that next week. Like a glass of blue milk and spaghetti. <laughs> we don't have to give him blue milk on Earth. I'll diet just so he makes it feel at home. All right, fine. That's, that's considerate of you. Uh, anything else to say about Luke? I mean, I think we're all kind of expecting the same thing, sort of a sad Luke. And I, I think there's other parallels to be made. Uh, like I said, the, the Kenobi thing, he'll be a lot like his his former master. I hope it's enlightened. Um, I'm, I'm hoping for enlightened Luke. I don't, like I said, I don't want to see Ray drag him out of his sadness, depression. Like I want him to see him already be out of it and waiting. Like, I don't want to see sad Luke. Well, the, there's going to be, I think it's going to be sad Luke, but also a dutiful luke who who knows what he has to do yeah, realistic luke uh yeah he'll still have that realism about him uh but luke is uh, it, it's kind of agreed among fans and I, don't, I don't know if i completely agree but most people see that uh luke is more like padme and and leia was more like vader not in that she has a uh a, a leaning towards evil but she was she's the the fiery hothead Whereas Luke was more of the, the 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 diplomat, even though Leia was an actual diplomat. No, I see it the other way. And I, like I said, I don't. I see it both ways. Um, it makes and sense. I, I think people like to. People like to make those kind of. Draw those lines, and I, I thought. There's there's pieces of both in in, in each character, um, but Padme Leia described Padme as sad. And I think an old Luke will also be sad, as as his mom had that sort of uh, inherent sadness. I think that's 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 inevitable. Um, yeah, uh, that's 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 my thoughts on Luke. I hope I, I just hope that he would like when he wakes up in the morning, he would still get up and like do some do some body weight squats, do a few push ups, just just you know, keep himself a little bit sharp. Because we saw what happened to Kenobi after he just let himself go on, on Tatooine. Well, yeah, he didn't Luke's have to keep good. in shape because he had that really great code name, like disguise name, and no one would ever find him. So. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely, he's looking good, man. Mark Hamill is looking good. Every time I see him, he's looking better right. and better. Like, I, I'm like super impressed. I'm really proud of him, man, to be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that hang there for a second. Oh, he was quite port. He was quite portly for a, for a bit. <laughs> like he put a lot of work into what he did, and he should be proud of what he's done. Uh, hopefully he is. I have no doubt. So let's 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 take our second and final break, and then we'll come back with our listener input. Which we, we got to find a better title for this segment than listener input. Uh, we'll come back and we'll do that, and then we'll we'll wrap things up. So here's a, here's a little spot from our new friends at the Star Star Wars Commonwealth Network. So well, I, I guess on the other side of of the break, we'll talk about uh, the Star Wars Commonwealth. But uh, for now, let's check out the ad, enjoy that, and uh, we'll be back. There are a lot of great Star Wars podcasts out there, including insert your name here. But we at the Generation X Wing podcast discuss things in a unique way. Ah, oh, so happy! I can't even. Feel my arms! Generation X-Wing Podcast takes a look back at pop culture that defines our generation. Look, sir, droid. From movies? I think I read somewhere that Kurt Russell thought that, you know, this is really like Indiana Jones. But to me, watching it just fresh today, it was he was really Han Solo. To TV. The Nova to... Scotia show. What's we one? can bring up. What is that? Trailer Park Boys. Oh, okay. Ooh. It's not Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> you know what? I think that's a whole episode. It is. I'm just going to yeah. say it's okay. very Canadian. Okay. And yeah. I love it to death. So does Anil. From collecting... Silent Mike is back. Silent Mike is back with batteries. 19... Oh, and the Twix? Cow. And he just dropped it on Wayne Gretzky's rookie card. <laughs> 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 and a case of Twix. Ooh. Good man. This better be a good Twix. And of course, we discuss our wonderful Star Wars universe. I am so thrilled today because I have been invited by the Outer Rim Garrison, the 501st, uh, Outer Rim Garrison of Vancouver, BC, to walk with them in the Canada Day Parade in downtown Vancouver. So once you're done listening to these great people here at... Insert your name here. 
come over to the Generation X Wing podcast with your hosts, Anil Sharma. That is going to be a shame. Josh Whittle. Peace. And Rob Williams. Pork chop sandwiches. It is a modern look at your retro lifestyle. Follow us on Twitter at Gen X Wing, on Facebook, on Instagram, and of course on our homepage at GenerationXWing.com. And we're back. There's our buds at the Gen X Wing podcast and a, a very unique, uh, I, we can't really call it a Star Wars podcast, I don't think, as, as they talk about everything that makes up uh, our nostalgic 80s and 90s uh, pop culture. Uh, great podcast, great guys. Uh, definitely make them part of your, your podcast playlist and uh, your, your Twitter timeline, if I can say that. Uh, it, you'll, you'll be enriched. And they're also on, on uh, Facebook. They're all over the place. Check them out, Gen X-Wing, Generation X-Wing. And um, hey, thank us later. Yeah, they're great. If you, if, if you did any, any living at all in the 80s or 90s, like stepped out of your house and turned on the TV, then they'll talk about something that interests you for sure. Absolutely. Um, every, every week, it's, it's, you know, they, they talked about Seinfeld for a while, which I knew uh, drove Rob over there nuts, but it was, it was music to my ears. Uh, they've talked about card collecting, which again, that was right in my wheelhouse uh, in the 90s. They, they just wrapped up uh, talking about the A-Team, which I don't remember too much about, but it was still awesome to, to hear those old uh, synopsis of, of, of shows gone by. Uh, terrific podcast, good guys, and uh, super happy that uh, now we have them part of the uh, the Star Wars Commonwealth, which started as a joke on Twitter. Uh, between between us and the guys that talk Star Wars, and, and now we're making it a bit of a thing. We're going to uh, band together here and uh, see if we'll, we can make a little run as a as a podcast network and help each other out and grow each other's audiences and uh, all that fun stuff. So, Star Wars Commonwealth, check it out. Be part of that growing thingamabob that we're doing. And um, it's it's well worth the while. I have to say that I will listen to all three and. Well, like everybody that runs a Great. podcast works really hard to to put together a good show, and uh, we're no exception. And Talk Star Wars is no exception, and, and nor is uh, Gen X Wing. Three three super solid shows, I think. And uh, look, it, it, there's a reason why we we want to have the, the three of us working together. Like we 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 don't want uh, crappy shows, right? We want we want shows that we would have no problem recommending to our friends. And uh, I, I have no problem. With, with those podcasts. I think if you're a Star Wars fan or a pop culture fan, these are shows that uh, they're, they're must-listens. And happy to stand proud with them in the Commonwealth. And uh, we'll, we'll see where that where that goes from there. But it's funny, because we, did, we never really did any firm launch. There was no, there's no press release. There's no website, Star Wars Commonwealth website. There, there's really not much. It's a bit of a soft launch, but uh, we're, we're going to build it up slowly. Uh, we're going to do it right and look around for... for other people to uh, to join the team. Well, I was privy it's to a word some, of, it's uh, a word of tongue thing. A word of tongue thing. It is a word of tongue thing. It's, <laughs> it's like a word of mouth thing, but you use your tongue. It's in France. It's a word of tongue thing. <laughs> um, I, I was privy to see some designs that Kyle did for the uh, for some t-shirts that I hope you put on your website soon, Kyle. Those those might be the nicest t-shirts uh, that will be on the site once they go up go live. Uh, again, my memory is crap. I don't even know what you're talking about. The Star, the, the Star Wars Commonwealth t-shirts you just designed? Did I design it's like Star Wars, a Commonwealth t-shirt? <laughs> I designed a logo. Yeah. I, well, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I assumed you were going to put it on a t-shirt. Um, Maybe. You definitely should. Maybe I will. Well, anyway, I, I, I'm going to do a, a bunch more uh, Star Wars Commonwealth logos. I, I've done a couple, and uh, we'll, we'll do a few more, and we'll put it to a vote and see who likes what. Yeah, those were very. I got cool. my. I got. I got my idea in the in the running. Well, your idea is not designed yet. I'll have to, wah, do it. I'll wah, have to figure a way wah. to do it. It's still the coolest one. Well, it's it, it's actually not until it's designed. But you like the premise, you know you do. I didn't even. I... Don't. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> you know it to be true. Sure. Anyway, let's let's get on with the show here. Um, this is in from Stephen. 
and he's he's got a pretty cool question. Uh, so if if we had to always, yeah, always, if we had to build our own ship, what would you need to have in it? So go anywhere with this. So any type of Star Wars ship that you want to have, um, what would be on your ship? Court, must, James, James must can I take have this one first? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure. James, I'm, I'm sure Cor- not gonna... Corey's probably got everything on this ship. This ship probably has a cafeteria, vending machines, servants, uh, strippers. It's probably got uh, a little farm somewhere in the back. It's go for it, Corey. I I I want to hear your ship. I I I have my. You're you're pretty accurate in the sense. <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> I have my I have my ace in the hole really here. I can hear what, St- what Stephon, Stephon is, saying this ship has everything. No, I I don't. Well, I do. I kind of do. I want a Firefly class ship. It's a freighter. I think we're all gonna go freighter. I think I know us all. And it's a props to Dad, our pops. And the name of the ship's gonna be called Finally. Yeah, you even <laughs> named your ship. Jesus Murphy. Yeah. And so there's 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 no cockpit. I want a bridge on this bad boy. Okay, so it's a it's a Firefly class, and I want a nice size cargo hold. But didn't a Firefly class do, have a cockpit? Uh, it's a more a cockpit, but I'm saying it's a modified version. Okay, <laughs> it's my version. We got a bridge on this ship. All right. Um, so yeah, we've got a good cargo hold, lots of like smuggling compartments within. Um, a big, big deal we need is we need a proper galley and a kitchen because we're going to be exploring the galaxy, which is a big place. And we want to be armed to eat all the delicacies that it has to offer. So we want a nice, nice kitchen with all the amenities, good to go. The ship's equipped with a, an astromech. It's armed to the teeth. It's got awards counts, it's reliable, fast, but the, the ace in the hole is we all have our sleeping quarters and whatnot, but we have a hollow deck. So that hollow deck, you can have your training room, we got a bar, theater, we can go on vacation, you got your game room. You're good to I, go. I was not far off. Like you're you put you're putting everything on this little ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're armed to yeah. teeth. I want well defense, fast. I want everything. And the fail safe, this is, I want a patent on this. This is my last thought. Is if all else fails and the ship is destroyed, there's a safe, an indestructible safe within that I store all my stuff in and all my information, all my goods and all my gold and whatever. And it locks on home and travels to light speed home. So even your safe has space. a hyperdrive. Oh, you didn't leave anything yeah. out. It's my space safe. And then what happens to your space safe once it gets home and you're dead? It comes to you. I don't want it. Lucky. What am I going to do what with it? What do you this? mean? I got all this gold and like all this treasure. Like you're just going to be like, no, it's from my dead brother. I don't want it. Chances are, <laughs> you're such a... chances are it's what got you in trouble. I don't want, I don't want your trouble. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it like that. If I knew it would hurt you, if I knew it was gonna put you in danger, I'd be like Spider-Man style. Like, no, you can't know my identity. But if I knew it was like totally not traceable, dude, you your whole family would be set. All right, fair enough. That's that's my patent. My patent. It's the space safe. <laughs> I, I like it. He even has a name. The the finally. All right, James. What's uh, what's on your ship? I don't. I don't know if if you went that elaborate. Uh, mine will be elaborate, but a uh, very different uh, approach than Corey. Okay, first of all, the most important thing on my ship is the pilot, Ray. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing I put on my ship, Ray, in the pilot seat. Um, I'll be her first mate, um, which uh, <laughs> I, I have, first of all, I have no problem um, just because I respect her as both uh, a leader and a force user. Um, just saying, and I've seen the so, sub, more the sub dobber relationship, but uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not ruling anything out. And then, <laughs> and then uh, for the ship itself, uh, I, I, you got to think combination like um, Rolling Stones 
tour bus meets uh, space balls flying Winnebago. Like kick ass, um, pimped out, but uh, no no weapons of security. This is like a flying limousine. Um, it's super fast. I guess if we had to outrun somebody, we could. But, uh, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, I, you, you kind of stole my thunder there, James. Here's Corey thinking that we're all going with freighter. But uh, no, I'm going with more like a, more like a pleasure yacht. There you go. Yes, yeah, so similar similar for me. So you're like the, like this like Padme's big silver thing. Uh, it doesn't have to. No, doesn't it have was, to be it was gleaming Dooku's. like that. Um, just has to be. A, I love Dooku's ship with the solar sails. It's very eco friendly, I suppose. But um, no, mine would mine would just it would have it would be well equipped for for eating for long voyages like Corey's. Uh, I'd have an adequate living room so i can watch sports as i make my travel across the, the galaxy i, I, I kind of like to fly myself so i don't i don't know if i'd have my own pilot but i would have a droid that's for sure um unlike you james i would have some form of defense on it now whether that's it's just beefy shields or actual cannons uh, it'd be one or the other for sure. Uh, no, that's me. J- James, James was the lover. I'm, I'm, I'm a lover, but I, I definitely want to be able to defend myself if it come to that, you know. No, that's, that's why I said unlike James. My, my. I'm flying okay. convoy with, with Corey. He's, he's my defense. There you go. Yeah. When he's not, Let's when he's not in his, together. when he's not in his hollow deck watching, uh, who knows what. Yeah, heading straight, a heading deck. straight toward, na- stored, toward an asteroid field. We, what we also need is we need a a sauna. Well, we need a what do you call it? Like a we need a jacuzzi and a sauna and a hot uh, steam room. So that'd be awesome. You're you're just basically a a flying hotel. No, because you got like <laughs> five people in there. What do you what do you want? You know, like you just gotta make the most of your space. That's all. You got to rename your ship to like Voyager of the Seas by Royal Caribbean. <laughs> no, my, my ship was a mix of the Falcon, Star Lord ship, which I don't know the name of, uh, the Ghost, and Serenity from Firefly. Yeah, they're all kind of similar, grungy looking ships. They're freighters, yeah, yeah. But they, there's so much potential there just to just install and modify and make your own. No, mine, mine is more of a pleasure craft. And a holodeck. That's all you need for a ho- oh, That's what I said. I said, am I like using it for like business or pleasure? So I kind of said both. Like the holodeck kind of allows you to do whatever you want. No, but what, you know, like you get for it. The thing that mine does have, so sort of like when you see people going camping and they're they're driving their, their Winnebago down the highway and then they're pulling a car behind it. Or similar to the ghost that has the phantom tucked in there. Mine's gonna have like a little a, a little stowaway ship that uh, if I want to go on little little excursions that just I just need a little tiny craft to get me in in and out of places. That that I I've got that. That's hot. You're lucky I didn't think of that. Now my now my ship's not all dressed anymore. No. Nope. No, you just gotta add that now. As, as before we yeah. leave this segment, I wrote down as as I did my thing. I wrote down Ray's first mate. And I've been staring at the words, and I just want you to know that it anagrams to "It's fate, Mr. Ray." <laughs> oh, that's kind of creepy. I'm just saying. <laughs> and uh, well, before we exit this question, I, I have to give uh, Steve Stephen props because uh, he reached out to me a couple weeks ago and and was looking for some advice on how to fire up a podcast, as if as if I'm some kind of expert. But uh, having gone through it not too long ago, I did have some pointers for him. And um, he's already up and running, guys. So he's got he's got a podcast with a buddy of his. Uh, it's called Ghostcasters, and uh, I saw that today. Yeah, and they're, they're doing pretty well off the off the hop here. They're, they're, it's it's a show about uh, paranormal movies, horror movies. That that's his jam. That's Steven's jam. He loves that stuff, uh, as well as Star Wars. But uh, he decided to to jump in with a buddy. And what I think what is is so admirable about what he did is he didn't dither like I did for months and months. Within a week, he said, "I want to do this." And then, days later, he's saying, "Check it out," and he's he's up. 
and I, I think that's that's super commendable. So uh, good on you, Stephen. Congrats. Um, you guys already sound great. You guys sound like you've been doing this for, for a long time already. So check Ghostcasters out on Twitter and iTunes and uh, ghostcasters.wordpress.com is, is uh, the website. Uh, and and I, I wish them the best. I just want to say quickly with that, like Stephen seems to very, be very interactive. I, I used to be like very much into horror in my younger days, but I literally have not watched any horror since my early 20s when I saw Saw or Sam. <laughs> but yeah. Way to laugh at yourself. So if he, if he can inspire me to watch a horror movie, if has, he has any good recommendations, because I haven't watched them in years, I'd be all ears. Well, there you go. That's a, there's a show for you, Steve. That was that. That reminds me of a scene in this movie Saw. All ears. I'm not gonna ask. Are you? Uh... <laughs> the only thing I'm gonna say about uh, uh, horror movies it reminds me it reminds me of this terrible dad joke, and we haven't gotten any in the show today. So I'll say that um, I don't like jokes about sluts. They're horrible. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry. Sorry. So how old does Ellie have to be before you tell her that one? Uh, maybe next year. Oh, maybe next year, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Stephen, there you go, man. There's there's a show. Uh, if you're new to horror, start here, and you could do like uh, a, a primers kit for people that are new to the genre, starting in the in the 70s through the 80s, and uh, what what's what's hot now? What was the first horror movie you ever saw, Kyle? In its entirety. Sure, or or that you remember, even pieces of. Well, um, I guess Jaws doesn't count as horror, does it? That's more of a thriller. Suspense thriller, yeah. Okay, so that doesn't count. Um, uh, maybe one of the Friday the Thirteenth or, uh, Deep Star Six, I think, which may also nice. fall into the suspense thriller category. But that one for sure, I yeah, remember. Yeah, maybe not horror, but yeah. Like you're talking about like the, 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 the slasher pit, the, the, the slasher flicks. Yeah, or zombie pick. I went I went to a birthday party when I was like eight, and the parents were like really really bad parents, and so they <laughs> just left us alone in the basement with with uh, I guess this kid must have had an older brother or something because we watched this like terrifying movie. I, I was it, it traumatized me. It was called um, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. Like I still remember the title, even though I only saw it that one day. My five-year-old brother was a homemade movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, I remember we had bunk beds, and he was a full-time resident of my top bunk for like a month after that. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. Oh man. Um, uh, Pet Cemetery could have been another one. Yeah, I remember that oh, was a good one. Way too late. Uh, and Child's Play. That's that's those those have to be the first movies that would have been in the mix as my first horror movie. But you know, you, I would watch these movies and I would laugh more than I would be terrified. I remember one of the Friday the Thirteenth, where uh, they're camping, a bunch of victims are camping, and one of them or two of them hide in a in a sleeping bag and zip it up and, as if that's going to protect them. And Jason just <sighs> picks it up and just beats them against a tree, like an old lady beating her rug against a tree, you know. And I was just killing myself laughing. I... I remember for me it was more like a rite of passage in the sense that uh, I watched everything from henceforth. But the first one I watched was at a sleepover with my buddies, and it was all about the frontal nudity. We were like in grade five or four or five, and we're just like, yeah, let's do it. Well, Full frontal nudity. Horror movies in the 80s. It was, like, it was nud- Friday the 13th. Nudity was table stakes. You, you, if you didn't have frontal nudity yeah. in the 80s, you, you weren't serious. Terminator. We would. Yeah, well, Terminator did that too. Terminator had full frontal nudity. It's like the first movie I saw with full frontal nudity. I couldn't believe it. Uh, okay, let's, let's 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 wrap it up here with. Um, uh, anyway, cheers, Stephen. Um, Ghostcasters, check him out. Cheers. And uh, our last question here for, of the night from Ads. So confirming a spoiler from earlier in the show, Ads does in fact have a question for us. And uh, so he was a latecomer to Rebels, uh, but he recently binged it all and just finished up season two. 
And he noticed a lot of... What, do you think you're better than me, Ads? You think you're better than me? <laughs> okay, maybe you're better than me watching Rebels, for sure. Uh, yeah, no, he he got right down to business. Although the, the DVD comes out uh, very, very soon, if you're so interested, James. Um, I heard it's on Netflix, and I have Netflix, so really I have no excuse. No, Rebels is not on Netflix. That's bad information oh, you got. Oh, then I do have no James. Uh, so anyway, so he, he noticed a lot of subtle connections between the show and The Force Awakens. So uh, a few of them, uh, stealing stealing TIE fighters, stealing and flying TIE fighters, uh, Jedi temples, which previously to you know, go back two years and we'd never, uh, well, prequels had Jedi temples, but off Coruscant temples. Uh, Rain and Ezra both uh, waiting for parents to return. Uh, there's kind of similarities between uh, Callus and Hux. Uh, Stormtrooper point of view and then betrayal. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what that one quite means, but I'm just reading these off here. Uh, Corey, do you know what he might mean by that? Yeah, I think it's what he's... It was. I, I think I do anyhow in the sense that I, I think it's... Uh, like Callus, what happened... Like Callus, I don't see him as a Hux... It's like an oxymoron question in the sense that... No, 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 um, not the Callus Hux thing. The, the Stormtrooper point of view and then betrayal. Yeah, it's just, it leads into each other in the sense that I, I feel like the Stormtroopers and Callus, like Callus is just a loyal agent of whoever he's serving and he's a good at what he does, but he's kind of oblivious to the real facts of the situation. So I feel like he has, he feels like he has been betrayed in the... The honorable ones, where you know Zeb helped him out yeah, yeah. before his own army did. So, like, just them not—they're just—they just don't know. Like, they're just blind servants. So when they know the truth, they kind of feel betrayed. Yeah, for sure. Um, like Zeb is totally pointing out the, uh, the like where are the Geonosians. You just wiped out a billion people. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. Why would we do that? You know. Yeah, Callus uh, is totally bought into the Kool Aid, the Imperial Kool Aid. And then finally, um, Rain Ezra having considerable unknown and untapped force skills. So th those are his observations, and uh, those are some really good ones. And you know, I, I thought about trying to make more, but I think that's a pretty complete list. I'm sure there are more. The crux of Ad's question is: it makes him wonder what we'll see in. in season three of rebels that might be a gentle nudge to something we see in episode eight and i think that's a great question and i keep talking about this this blog post that i'm working on and i i'm waiting to finish uh life debt aftermath life debt before i really put it out there if i do indeed put it out there um but i think he's absolutely right that because these people all work together the guys who do the TV shows with the movies and the comics and novels, they're all sharing ideas now. And I think absolutely 100% that stuff that we see in Season 3 of Rebels uh, will be hearkened to or reinforced and brought to the to the mainstream audiences in Episode 8. And I, I talked about it in a previous podcast and I talked about it like half an hour ago. Uh, the idea of, of Master Apprentice opening temples um i think that could be a, a very strong possibility in episode eight uh, Corey, do you see that's that's one interesting thing like, i i took notes on that in the sense that just shroud of darkness rebels episode take for example it's incredible like just the 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 power within these temples in the sith temple in uh, twilight of the apprentice the the power of these temples is just incredible and they're lost in time no one knows about these temples. They're all totally forgotten. And the potential, the untapped potential is just insane. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and trying to tr pull at some threads that don't yet exist into episode eight. Um, I can see them. I can see Luke being a conduit into uh, the gray of the force. In the same way that uh, this this Bendu character is going to take us there, uh, what what I think, and it, it's sort of a, a little peek into the, the this massive blog post I'm working on, is I I think Luke is going to learn that a lot of what 
was believed about the Jedi and the Force was wrong. And that uh, Luke is on Act 2 looking for these Jedi temples to actually get to the core of what the truth about the Force and the light and the dark and the gray. He, he, he's trying to figure it out. He's He's taken a, a cue from Yoda, who once upon a time told him to unlearn what he's learned. And so, dude, you, you totally, totally, totally read my mind. Like, James, this is where it draws you into this. Because this is something that I thought of you right away. And, like, we're talking about similarities. And this is just basically classic mirror storytelling. Like, where we see a lot of the same themes going on and on and on. But there's something in this Shroud of Darkness episode of Rebels where um, Ahsoka says word for word, uh, not word for word, but she basically says Yo Master Yoda in the last years of his, when she first knew him as a child, he was happy. And then he, he seemed troubled all the time. And the reason he was troubled, because he said, she said basically she knew there was a, it was the end of time and a new beginning, like the fourth age of man in the Lord of the Rings. Like he knew their time was coming to an end and there would be a new age of man. So it was such a very similar analogy. Yeah, there's there's time in the Clone Wars series, the Jedi knew something was up. They couldn't see further than their nose, but they knew something was up and they knew that they were, I guess, the, destined. The dark side was... Well, they they, yeah. they knew the death, the the shadow of the dark side was growing and looming, uh, but they also knew that they were done for. I think deep down they knew it, whether they they. Well, Yoda so much says so in, in the episode of Rebels. He's saying we were scared, we were under the cloud, uh, the shroud of the dark side. Like he says it, like we were ignorant. He says in this episode, he says we were the Jedi were arrogant, which is something they talk about in Attack of the Clones. Um. So there you go. I mean, uh, the, I can't really pull too much uh, to answer Ad's question. It was things from episode or season three that we'll see. Um, you know, that that master apprentice dynamic, I think, is something that we'll see paralleled. Uh, so we'll see um, a wiser uh, Kanan shepherding uh, an, an Ezra who's being pulled towards the dark in the same way that we'll see a wiser Luke shepherding a ray who's probably also going to be pulled towards the dark uh, but those are i mean yeah, those... both more power both more powerful than their master quite possibly yeah for sure um but yeah that's i mean that's not that much of a leap that's a very superficial cut uh we'll, we'll learn more it's not going to be long before we get to uh really get get to the core of this matter here uh, so I, remind us at some point ads because we're too irresponsible to remind ourselves uh, let's let's get back to this question again in in a couple months once we once we've got a couple uh, episodes of Rebels under our belt. And James, I know you're over there probably uh, dozing off a little bit, but uh, Ads didn't forget you. A very faithful listener who realizes that you haven't caught up on Rebels yet, so he he's going to put this to you instead. And we'll we'll end the show here. Uh, who's got the, who, who's going to win the Ryder Cup this year? Europe, but. Um, I think that the U S is about to like make a, a shift and maybe next Ryder cup Europe should be worried. I think, I don't know if you know about the, the sort of the history of the Ryder cup, but for, for a long time, Europe basically was just getting its, its butt kicked. Um, and then in, in more recent years, uh, it's been a, a much more fair, uh, tournament and, and arguably Europe's got. The strongest players in the world right now. Well, uh, Mac I've McElroy, I, I, amongst others, um, and and you got to remember, like, so so you might say, well, Jason Day, but so the Ryder Cup is Europe against um, America, so excluding uh, a lot of the world, that means, and then so every every other year, there's also the President's Cup, which includes all those other countries. It's the it's the world minus Europe versus America. But didn't Mike Weir? So America gets, didn't our own Mike Weir play with the European team at one point? Uh, no, he played with the world team in the President's Cup. Oh, okay, I'm, mis I'm mixing up the President's Cup. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, but beyond all that confusion, in either event, I never cheer for the Americans. 
Um, I always found myself pulling for what was what was the underdog, the Europeans, and just I don't know. I, I never pull for the Americans really in anything. They're the, the the Yankees of world sport, usually the favorite. So go Commonwealth. Yeah, but but I'll say that they've got some really exciting young good players, and I think there's one flying under the radar somewhat right now named Brooks Kwepka, who will be world number maybe one, but two or three in the next few years. Really, really solid young player. Yeah, I mean, the, the U.S. has a lot of good young players coming up with uh, with uh, Dustin Johnson. Yeah, exactly. J- uh, Jordan Spieth seems to be uh, the, the real deal. Um, Ricky Fowler's legit. Um, Matt Kuchar, and, and they still, they still got like seasoned veterans hanging around, too. Well, he still has, yeah, Mickelson's like, still kicking around. He's, I think he's in third third points in, in points qualifying. Yeah, I mean, for, for, team, for, so. for a guy who's getting a little bit older now, he's having a fantastic year. Yeah, feels just so steady. Um, and it's funny, like, he's really not a steady player, like, during a round. He's sort of all over the place, takes a lot of risk. But year after year, the guy just, you know, he just rises to the top. So Wait, I mean, and you look at him, I mean, I, not the way he plays, but visually, just looking at Mickelson, he looks fitter and healthier now than he did 10 years ago. Yeah, I would agree with which that. Which shouldn't happen. When, when you're 45, you should not be healthier than you are at 35 you know, all things being equal. Yeah, but his nickname when he was 35, well, well he, he had several, but... Um, hefty Lefty? We, we, we used to we used to like to call him Lefty Lumpy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but but yeah, you're right, he is fitter. Um, I, I love, I, I can't take credit for this. I'm pretty sure it must have been uh, Faraday who said this, but watching Phil Mickelson play golf is like watching a drunk chase a balloon on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> he's just oh, he's an exciting fantastic. player to watch. It is fantastic. I love that quote. Well, Faraday is is a godsend to to golf broadcasting. He, he is the best thing to happen to golf broadcasting since um, ever. Johnny Miller uh, talked about himself on the air every single week. <laughs> I, I love to hate Johnny Miller, by the way. Uh, I think a lot of people are feel the same way. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, there's our. It's been a while since we did a sports tangent, but uh, thanks, ads. That, that, uh, that felt good. It felt good to do that. Thanks for including the ads. <laughs> thanks for watching Rebels ads. You're the man. Uh, well, ads is the man, but for more reasons than just having watched Rebels. And I can't disagree with that. He is uh, <laughs> having. I think. I think ads is off this week, so we wish you a, a good break, ads. If I'm not mistaken. Enjoy your camping, buddy. Yeah, enjoy. And with that, uh, it was time to bring the show to a close. Look at that, guys. We we thought we'd have we we were a little worried this week with the, with the dearth of news, and here we are at uh, well over two hours, well over two hours. So um, high fives all around. We did it, guys. Uh, Corey, how do we, can we get in touch with you uh, between shows? Yeah, reach me and chop uh, chop rules with a Z. Uh, I'm going to put a Twitter poll out there, I think, uh, at least bi-weekly minimum, and I'd really, really appreciate for some more interaction than uh, retweets. Give me it. I don't care. I want to have a, I want to have a hundred, I want to have a hundred votes minimum. That's my goal. You got to work, man. You got to work. Yeah. Twitter's work. Yeah, I don't even have a hundred followers yet. Twitter used to be a joke. It used to be so easy to, to work Twitter, and now it's, it's tough. It's not like it was in 2010 or 11. It's, it's, it's hard work now. Uh, James, where where are you at? Uh, I'm sitting in my basement, and you probably can't find me. But uh, online <laughs> at the, uh, <laughs> it is late. Tommy Bombadil one, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's it. Sometimes at a softball. That's field. where that's the only place you can find me. You can find me on the softball field uh, Thursday and Friday night. I'll be there. And uh, I'm at Tumbling Saber, of course. Uh, Thank you so much for, for listening, everybody, to another episode of the Tumbling Saber podcast. And, and be sure to check out our friends at Talk Star Wars and Generation X-Wing. And uh, please head over to iTunes and leave us a review, especially if you're in Canada. My goodness, I, I know you've been listening. So uh, drop us a review, help us climb those rankings, and uh, uh, get the Star Wars Commonwealth up at the top. We, we're really looking to build something here. Uh, so follow us on iTunes, or follow us on, on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, head, leave us a review on iTunes. And um, again, if you want to be part of our mailing list, here, 
here's a way to hold me accountable to get me to write more. Because uh, I, I have a, I really want to do a lot more writing, but uh, sometimes I need people to punch me in the face to do it. So head over to tumblingsaber.com, uh, plug in your email into into the window and uh, into the pop-up window, and uh, that that might spur me to write a little bit more. So I my my goal was to send out an, a weekly newsletter that would uh, lead us to our blogs and, and the show and whatnot. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So let, let's 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 try and build up that list too. And uh, next week's episode 40. That's uh, another big number. Uh, but so until then, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you then. Bye for now. <coughs> I had to just close. I'm gagging here. <coughs> Good one, Kyle. Watching you walking away from me Were you watching